What's going on, Internet? The Black Okage here, a.k.a. TBH, and I'd like to welcome you guys back to the Game and Illuminati podcast. We are the Enlightened Gamers, and you are now tuned into episode 147. If you're watching the video version of the show at youtube.com slash GI Updates, know this show is available on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, and all other major podcast platforms. Be sure to rate the show five stars on Apple and Spotify. We need your five-star rating on Apple and Spotify to push us up in the algorithm and help bring in new potential listeners. Also, follow the podcast on social media we drop daily content on our social media pages we're available on tiktok twitter and instagram and our handle for all our social media pages is at gi updates now allow me to introduce you to my co-hosts the first of which can be seen live on twitch raging at some horseman in lords of the fallen ethos say what up to the people what's up everybody there's gonna be a lot of raging today lots of it as you can see, the uh, horseman has really got his energy down. Uh, <laughs> and my second co-host. Oh, it's a horseman. Pick your, pick your poison. <laughs> <laughs> my second co-host is jealous at the fact that I got the true ending in Lies of P because I didn't skip the final boss fight. UTX Mickey Mouse the Dawn. Which, fun fact, before the stream started, he's doing his new game plus because he's trying to get the true ending so he can keep his $5 tier. Say what up to the people, JG. I mean, I just like the game, but <laughs> but shout out to you. I'm I'm glad that I'm glad that you uh you, you defeated your demons. It did not take 16 hours, so so that's great. But <laughs> but if we want to if we want to do the the addition to this, you were like five hours for that and Then it took you like another almost three. So we'll we'll just say seven. I'm not gonna round it up. We'll say seven. So almost almost eat those. He was almost there, but Damn. you know he did it. He Melania did it. is still undefeated, huh? He wasn't he wasn't going for it for this time uh, not this time not the millennia record at least you can at least you can see my gameplay i know yeah, I, every time <laughs> every, <laughs> every time, every time. Every time. Every like clockwork like i said we're about to start disqualifying to folks either disqualifying <laughs> them or severely lowering their tier because it's a fraudulent gameplay like i may have mickey mouse gameplays you know i use whatever to my advantage you know i admit that but at least you can see it i stream my stuff yeah, you can now call me um, Grandmaster Jedi Elden Lord Puppin Bastard now. Uh, now, before we get into the show, friendly reminder, join our Discord, discord.gg slash GI updates. It's totally free. Big shout out to our Discord members. It's many perks for joining our Discord, such as shout outs, but we also do monthly giveaways, consultations for content creators, watch parties. Uh, and speaking of shout outs, shout out to some of our members, including Zayna Rain, Mr. Flex a lot, and Black Panda. Join the Discord. If you're watching at youtube.com slash GI updates, there will be a link in the description box below. But just in case you're listening to the audio version, head on over to discord.gg slash GI updates. Just type it in your phone. It'll pop up. Um, now, without further ado, let's get into the show. We're going to start off with a little bit of the freebies for this month. Xbox don't got no more free games. They just have like a batch of games that you can download at any time. They don't have the monthly. So instead, we got PlayStation. And on PlayStation, you get Gotham Knights, House of Ashes, Disco Elysium, Alien Isolation, Dead Island, and Outlast. And then on PC, specifically if you're an Amazon Prime member or a Twitch Prime member, uh, you get Grund, Ghostwire Tokyo, The Coma 2, Monster Prime, uh, Monster Prime 2, The Texasus, and The Super Adventure Hand. What happened to all them free games that Epic was giving away? I feel like that's kind of slowed down. I've been looking, but I haven't really seen anything. Uh, those are your free games for this month. Now let's move into the main conversations, the leading conversations for episode 147. Since the last podcast, a lot of games have came out. And the crazy part is the next podcast, we got even more. It is gaming season, baby. Despite what some of your favorite content creators say, gaming is stale. That is a lie. Which is actually a perfect segue because the first game we're going to talk about is Lies of P, which the P stands for penis. Um... Lies of P. It is a new Souls-like game. A lot of people were comparing it to Bloodborne. It's developed by NeoWiz, which is a Korean-based studio. This is their first major, like, kind of triple A release. Um, a lot of people said it looks like Bloodborne, but in my opinion, it plays like a mix between um, Elden Ring and like Sekiro with the aesthetic of Bloodborne. Um, but yeah, uh, I beat the game. JG beat the game. Ethos doesn't play games. Uh, I'm gonna give you the floor, Jay. I you played f- some of it. Oh, you played some of it. Okay. Well, yes. I, I, stand, I, stand I beat three bosses. I stand correct. <laughs> so you yes, just got them. past the demo. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I got, I literally did the whole much. demo part and been yeah, passing it. Got you. Uh, so what's your impressions of, well, you know, you can, you can give a review. Cause I mean, you beat the game already, Jay. What do you think? 
Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think the game is is really good. The the one critique I'll get the negatives out the way. I feel like some of the things that people had feedback on in the demo did not get properly or it's a very, very small change in which they did. And I'm mainly referring to like the parry slash block system. Now, to this day, out of any Souls born game, Sekiro has the parry system or or deflect system down you know almost almost to a t and i feel like neo wiz tried to get some of those elements with the parry slash block system where it's not like a a complete parry or a complete counter but it's just hey if you just perfect block then it'll it'll end up messing up their posture or stagger in this one so it's like really you know barely a difference i feel like the the timing window was super uh slow so you really have to get it you know precise in order to parry slash block on this one but the one positive that they did do was whenever you block but you don't perfect block at least you don't lose all of your health uh, if you end up hitting the enemy you don't get it again so that was one you know minor change that they did because if they would have kept it the same i probably would have been raging even more at this game um but the rest of the game i i actually love the story i think that the story even though it's not anything groundbreaking I feel like the story was super easy to get into, mainly because there's no lore elements. Um, you know, some people like the lore elements. They want to go on YouTube or, or Google and, you know, look up what's going on. But I don't I don't want to do that. Like, I just want to play the game. And, you know, if I see a couple of secrets or a little bit of, you know, Easter eggs here and there, that's fine. But I don't want to go into a game not fully understanding and have to go the extra mile in order to understand. Like, this game is, you know, pretty, pretty, you know, straight to the point. There's a couple of twists here and there, you know, once you get further in the game. But it's pretty, you know, you know, cut and dry. And so it's so a what's going on with the puppets and the humans and and the um, the the decaying monsters um you know that you end up encountering and in, in all the enemies so so that's cool um gameplay is solid i love all of the weapon that they have the uh the weapons have a lot of variety to them uh they cater to different play styles um the um the actual leveling up system is not too many things that they have like i feel like elden ring and other dark souls games have like a ton of different stat sheets but this one you know it's only like six or seven of them so it's not that hard to like find whatever you consider like your optimal build and all of the weapons for the most part are like only scaled to like motivity and technique like there are a couple of advanced weapons but it's really not you know too many so it, you know it won't take some crazy calculations in order to you know figure out what's the what's the meta build or what you want to do so that's cool too um the legion weapons are cool and that again that's just more of that secure vibe with the with the weapons that you can have in your in your arm so so that's dope um but yeah i mean it's, a, it's another dark souls game like it's pretty much you know if you're into these sort of games you're, you sort of know what you're going to get into um you know it has some of the same elements as other dark souls or bloodborne games but um again a lot of people are comparing this to bloodborne because of the aesthetic you know it, it's it's dark in a lot of areas again it just it just reminds you of bloodborne like when you're just traversing throughout the uh the level so i get why they're saying that but um but i agree to your sentiment tba that it's more like a like an elden ring and uh flash Sekiro vibe but the game was really cool i i definitely enjoyed it. it it was one of my favorite dark souls games of the year i'm still gonna edit the wool long i don't know why wool long still got a got a, a hold on me outside of like armor core um but this was a really solid game and i think that any dark souls or bloodborne fan i think that you you would be easy um it would be easy for you to get into this one and uh and grind through it it was a really good game i think you have an affinity towards wool long because you're biased towards like asian culture that's why I mean, but I think like the parry system was also really good in that game. It, like, was. it was fast, like everything was super fast paced. Um, the only thing I didn't really like about Wolong Long was like it just had a ton of different weapons and armor that were just all the same. But like once you get like the special weapons, then you know you ended up being you know a, a totally different type of game. But um, but like I said, I think the parry system was really you know what got me. But it really is more of you know the the environment too. Like I like anything Chinese or Japanese um, feudal culture. So, I, I think I, mean, uh, I think what helped back Wo Long for me was the lack of enemy variety. By like halfway in the game, you pretty much saw everything, and I think that's what. So it's like it became kind of routine. It became too easy because of that, because like you had already mastered the patterns. I think if they would have mm. did a little bit more with that, which I think Liza P does, it's constantly introducing new enemies, so like you stay on your toes. Um, also, the level design is really good in this. A lot of verticality, although it's dark, it's still a very vibrant world that you want to explore. Like I took the time to really um, 
explore the world. I agree with you with the story in Liza P. I actually really enjoyed it. I wish there was like more cutscenes. Uh, like without spoiling anything for those of you that actually not heard of this game, like it's a spin on Pinocchio. Uh, and in this world, it's basically like Pinocchio meets iRobot, where like Geppetto created these these puppets to basically serve mankind, but then they go crazy. Uh, and then you got to play Pinocchio and you have this whole lying mechanic. You got to destroy all the evil puppets. There's a pretty good plot twist. The only thing I didn't like about the story was like, did you collect all the um, did all the phone, the riddles? Yes. Yeah. So there's a key plot point that's tied to the side quest. So like if you do play the game, make they're in the game. There's going to be a guy. They're gonna, you're going to be walking around. It's kind of hard to miss it. And there's going to be a phone ringing. And if you answer the phone, he's basically the Riddler from Batman. And he's going to give you a riddle. And every time you answer it correctly, it'll give you a key that you can access to like this Illuminati room. If you unlock all those rooms, it'll give you a key plot point. If you play this game, please do those phone missions. Because like once I got to that, I was like, oh, shit. I was like, OK, that was a nice little plot twist. Uh, but like I didn't like that. they. I was I was like I was happy. But then I was like, damn, I was like, why did they lock that behind a side quest? Uh because that was like a big moment for the game. But uh, overall, boss fights, uh, for the most part, I enjoyed them. I would say this game is a fair challenge. Uh, I never spent more than an hour on any boss simply because like it was it was hard, but like it was fair. Like it was always I always felt like it was my fault and I could recognize it. So for the majority of my playthrough, I was actually laughing. I was like, oh, I shouldn't have did that. Ah, like I was being greedy. Uh, and I, li I like when the game is like that hard, fair challenge. Uh, it wasn't until like the end of the game uh it was the third to last boss basically Kilawa's sister uh and then the last boss the final one that jg didn't beat uh <laughs> which was complete and utter bullshit and it exposed the game for the price this is my biggest issue with the game right so like i demoted it to a game pass game it's like a solid seven i wanted to give it an eight like i see the potential that i think they can unlock with a sequel um, but right now it's like it's hard for me to give it higher than anything in the seven because it goes back to what JG was saying. They they recognize there's issues with the parry system and they did not fix it from the demo. And the only reason I let this shit slide is because the game allows you to play how you want the like 90 percent of the game. Right. So I created a build where because I felt like the, the dodging people were complaining about the parry and the dodge. You could upgrade your dodge. So the dodge is better in this game. So I created a build with high stamina and I created an, ev an evasive build and like I parried only where I really needed to. So I got to the whole game just dodging and memorizing patterns and beating that ass. I get to the end of the game and the final boss fight, it forces you to parry. You cannot dodge. He will tear your ass up. So I had to completely change my fighting style when I got to the end of the game and that shit pissed me off. I'm like, bro, it wouldn't have been an issue if the parry system was like Wulong or Sekiro, which I feel like this game is what it wants to be. But like they have to fix that parry system and the camera. Those are the two things that I feel like held it back for me giving it like an eight or higher because that camera was spazzing all over the place in certain uh, boss fights. There's certain boss fights where like the, 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 the enemy will jump in the air. You can't even see them. So you're literally praying if you parry and that's on top of the shitty parry system you're gonna see ethos if you continue to play it was some real some moments where i just felt like straight cheated i was like bruh i didn't get beat i was like this is some bullshit uh i even feel like there's a degree of luck with the final boss fight but overall i would say it's a good game i've seen some people saying this is a game of the year contender i disagree uh, it might be in my top 10 but maybe like a six seven spot uh i i don't know if this will crack my top five based off of i'm not gonna lie the final stretch of this game is complete bullshit. uh and i beat it so you can't tell me i'm wrong uh what do you think ethos uh, <laughs> uh, i mean i i got to the third boss um i i've this is what, I, what siggy told me but uh siggy told me that you were just sloppy that that's why <laughs> <laughs> did, did he also tell you that's a meme from the chat yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I was there, I was okay. there, yeah. but um yeah no um i got very infuriated on the third boss you know the lightning dude the big lightning dude that like slams and stuff because of the parry system the that lightning was, dude it was the, the big the police officer? monkey police officer that's looking the dude, second boss like, ain't the second boss no actually. he's the third the, the second major boss. I'm talking the about the first major. one was. Uh, Who do you consider the first major boss? Uh, the, the regular uh, police officer. Uh, the dude with the the hat that takes his head off and slams. That's and the first. To me, the third really. boss is the bishop. Right. The the big ass. I don't think you got to the bishop yet. That's the real first. No, there's that's like the a first boss skill check. I think there's something. There's a boss. I thought between those two. Am I tripping? 
Am I thinking no. of someone else? Oh, well, I'm thinking the police officer. My bad. Yeah, yeah you're thinking the, the police officer from the Tutorio guy. The police, yeah, yeah Tutorio guy was the first right. check, and then and then yeah. the the clown was the was first the boss. First actual and then thing. yeah, and and then, exactly I mean, the second I, boss. And, yeah. yeah, and then There's I don't like, know the if you want that's what if you want to count the freaking uh the the one who was messing with Geppetto, who was trying to kill him, the human. But oh yeah, that's that's what I was thinking. That was the second. That was the second mini boss. The donkey guy. Yeah, the dummy. I mean, he, he, he had a he did have a health, he had a health bar in it. He was like, unique. I don't know. Yeah, I see it. I just assume like if I see somebody with a big health bar that goes down the bottom, I just I call okay. I count them as a boss. That's okay. that's all right. All right. If all they're right. above their head, they're a mini. Dan, so you didn't even make it to the archbishop, bro. Yeah, I want to see you no, stream that game. I, I, yeah, I watched. Really uh, uh, I watched both of y'all play and how frustrating that shit was. Yeah, that's the first skill check in my Like, oh my god, yeah. Um, I'll get around to it eventually, I guess, when I get a chance, I guess. But um, it looks good. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I watched y'all just like getting mad, bro, and that made me not want to play the game. I was, I'm just like, it's, oh, it's artificial. Man. In my opinion, it's artificial difficulty. I don't. I like y'all know. I'll admit when I'm getting my ass beat, I'll be like, all right, that's my fault. I shouldn't have. Did. When I play point guard in 2K, I'll be like, all right, I shouldn't have threw that pass. I'll acknowledge when I'm doing something wrong. It's some straight bullshit in this fucking game, bro. And it mainly happens at the end of the game. And like I said, it's because this game, I feel like, wants to be Sekiro so bad. And they really need to hire... They need to call up from software or whoever created the Wulong um, uh, game They and, and figure out how to do a proper parry system. Because I feel like the end game is really only hard because it forces you to use that shit. And it just what doesn't do work half what the time. What do you time. mean that it's wrong? Like, what do you mean by that when you say, like, it's it's off or it's wrong? Like, I, I that's something I'm curious about. Um, the window's you know, really what, tight what because, like, it, it, the animation doesn't flow correctly to me. Like, to me, when you hit the parry button, it's like it goes from animation one to ten. But there's no frames to two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, if that makes sense. So you have to time it. It's such a tight window. And it's because it's animated. The weirdly. window that you can't wait. Are you talking about? Do you feel like the the window which the parry is active? Are you talking about on your side is too short? Or are you talking about when the enemy on my side? On, on my you? side. The, so I'm you're like, saying okay? Yeah. So like you'll know. And that's okay. why I was getting frustrated in the final fight. I memorized the attack patterns. I'm hitting the button, and I'm like, bro, if this was Sekiro or or Wulong, I would have parried this shit, bro. But like the window on that shit is so fucking weird. It was just I never felt confident using it. Yeah, because think about think about Sekiro. Like when you press the button, like like he just ching ching. Like you could literally like just do it yeah. constantly. Like it just felt like good. It's, it's it's almost as fast as you can actually press the button. And yeah. in Liza P, it's not like that. It's actually pretty slow. So you have to get that like almost like oh, said, like so you're saying. Okay, I understand. So you're saying basically it feels like the parry is more like from frame zero to two. There's actually not a perfect parry, but you have to wait yeah, okay, until like that's three a good, to five yes, before yes. Look it Look at the game developer guy. You got what I'm saying. <laughs> I, I know because yeah, right. I, I copied the Sekiro parry and I had to spend like six months like researching and understanding how that I had to research like the actual mechanics of how Sekiro does its defy like, because I copy basically the similar. Um, so like just sidebar but like in in my game for samurai zero right there it's 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 difficult because it's multiplayer so we have to compensate for lag but you have to do that what you're saying right like you have to do uh, a period of where they're allowed to perfect and when it's held for too long it's not a period it's a guard right mm -hmm. and and that's determined of what you do um one of the things we had to do during development which was we realized was a lot of people would do spamming which would be like they would just spam the guard button over and over again when someone was just starting to attack them to like hope they'd parry them and that wasn't really skill that was just you're panicking to somebody hitting you mm -hmm. um so like we had to implement that sort of thing where it was just like okay if you basically maybe this is why liza p feels different or maybe they did it a different way but at least the way we designed it was was that the sis our system would t be able to tell us that if you press the parry button and then you follow it up immediately with another guard like input like very like in a very short amount of time the second guard input wouldn't count as a parry because you're because the system would recognize that you're trying to spam it and you're not actually trying to time it i don't know maybe they're tried they tried something similar but they just implemented it incorrectly or did something weird um I, I will say I feel like it was a little bit different, but I don't feel like it was as different as as difficult as you guys are expressing it as. But that could have just been a personal, like subjective thing. I, I think it's definitely not the same. Secure, I think, still is the best because it came up with a system. But 
Um, mm, I, I don't know about that. Let me, let me put it this way: multiple people complaining about it. It wasn't just us. You can't. You can, like, okay, when you get to the I orange bitch, okay, so here, yeah, so here, here's, here's, okay. here's why yeah. he has this perspective because that that last boss that you fought, the big ass police officer yeah, with the electric, you, you have you to can, deflect. No, no, you, yeah. you don't have to. You can dodge that whole thing, bro. I didn't deflect. Oh, any I deflected shit. him the whole fucking time. Okay. Like when he slams down on you, I don't dodge. When that you shit, get to the archbishop, you're gonna have to master it, like to some degree. Like that's why it's the first real skill. You don't have to do it with the police officer. I never deflected anything. Thing. um jg uh okay i'll hold off on this don't answer this now i guess until we get to the topic unless you want to move to it because i was going to ask you how does that feel compared to lords of the fallens perry uh um yeah we'll, we'll I'll, I'll address it when we get yeah there, i guess that's the first thing i would ask you then about yeah that. but well, hold on. Sure well, let me let me say one more thing and then i'll segue to it another okay. issue i had with the perry system is it just doesn't reward you uh it drains your stamina the only reward you get in it is you can break the enemy's weapon but it takes so fucking long there's you know, literally no reason to do I, it. I know what it is. I know what's I know what the thing you don't like. I don't think it's the parry. I think the problem you have is that the opponents aren't following the same rules you are. Because you know how in Sekiro, your opponents even have a like a bar, a stamina bar, where like if they hit you and you deflect them, you can basically break them. Mm. And they have to and they basically like they get stunned. Mm. Does Liza P even have that's that? In the type game. Of bar? No, that's in the game. So the enemies you do, actually like, just brought up another criticism I have of the game. Them? So yeah, so when you def when you do parry enough, you build up stagger, and then what happens right. is it creates a white little bar around the health bar. Oh right, you right. Hit them and with a heavy attack and it stuns right. them. The issue, this is them, another yeah. issue I have with the game. You don't know when you're going to stagger them. So a lot That's, of times, okay. a lot of times I know. wasn't ready to do it, and then I wasn't able to capitalize on it. I thought that was bullshit. Uh okay, yeah, that yeah, I, it, I it's artificial difficulty yeah. to me. Yeah, there's no yeah. real indicator before it's going to happen. I agree. I agree. I feel like you should be able to see the enemies. Stagger bar. bar yeah, they're so, poised. Yeah, being able to know how they're close poised. they are. Yeah, they're poised and know like how close they are to breaking. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Cool. Okay. Then. Um, cool. But, but overall, I still think it's a good game. Like, I'm not going to sit up here and lie. I had fun the majority of it. I'm just letting y'all know there's a crazy difficulty spike at the end Do you think it's going to get a nomination? Like, outside of your personal bias, do you think it's still going to get it? Unfortunately, no. No, I don't, don't think, think, I don't think it will. It's too much. If this was last year, if this was last year or maybe next year, Yes, uh -huh. but there's too many. There's too many fire games. I think I don't think it'll get nominated. It was it only five, it can only be five picks, section, right? It was a Dark Souls section. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like you don't think you don't think it get nominated for at least like action game or or. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. I thought you were talking about game yeah. of the year. I thought you were talking about game of the year. Well, I like uh, any category. Like you maybe action. Yeah. Like, Possibly, okay. but then again, you put the other games that we were talking about, you put Armor Core and Action in, if that's yeah. the case, you put Wo Long in there, if that's the case, you're going to put Jedi Survivor in there, if that's the case. Like I said, it still has other games to compete with, I just don't think it's going to make the cut, because 2023 is just crazy right now. It's a really good game, but if we're talking about Game of the Year or, or any type of nomination, I just don't think, I think it's going to get snubbed out of those categories, because people are just going to think about other games that, that are just more polished in that game. Okay. I shouldn't have to pray and hope your mechanics work. And I just never felt confident at the end of the game. Like, I was just like, I don't know about this shit, bro. Versus like Elden Ring, I felt accomplished uh, at the end of the game. Um, but, you know, let's segue into more because um, y'all wanted to talk about it. The next game we're going to talk about is Lords of the Fallen. This is another Souls-like game. Who is this developed by? Lords of the Fallen. CI Games. CI Games. Fun fact, they had another game called Lords of the Fallen. So if you're confused why you're hearing about this, it's because basically it's like a reboot of the whole series. I guess they're trying to revitalize uh, the name. Uh, it's available on every major platform. I have not had a chance to play this one, but I do know that one thing that's different is it has co-op, drop in, drop out co-op. Just have to be at a rest point. You'll need some item like Elden Ring. Um, JG and Ethos got some time with Lords of the Fallen. So you got the floor. Uh, what's the good, bad, and ugly on Lords of the Fallen? And even if you want to touch on that parry system, because that's kind of how you segued it. JG. Uh, Ethos. Oh, JG. Oh, okay. okay um so i played a few hours i actually got to do the co-op as well with homeless so shout out to homeless um <clears throat> first thing i noticed the game was definitely a little rough and uh i think since the game came out it's been like at least two three patches so they're actively working on it i can at least tell them that um i, I can tell that that's happening but the game was unoptimized i'm and i'm on pc um siggy said he got on ps5 and um <clears throat> Excuse me, when he got to the first ball, the game crashed. So it's definitely a little hey. rough right now. So I just want you all to to know this, whoever's listening. Um, hopefully they end up, you know, getting better with, with everything across all consoles because it's not just a PC thing. Um, so it's a little unoptimized. Um, second thing is the parry system. Again, while I feel like it's a little bit more forgiving to do a parry, 
it, it's I feel like it suffers the same problem that literally we were just talking about with Liza P. There's no there's no real indicator or it doesn't make it make it known that, hey, when you parry someone and then you hit them with a heavy or kick them, that is going to stagger them. So I was like, dang, like we were complaining about Liza P in this parry blocking system. But if I'm going to compare the two, I feel like Liza P was better as, as far as that as that mechanic. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, dang, I wasn't I wasn't expecting to say that. But that's how I feel about the parry system. I felt like Liza P was still a little bit better than um than Lord to the Fallen. So I'm gonna play a little bit more. You know, maybe it's just because it's early in the game. What were you using? So I ended up picking. I forgot what the what, yeah, what the name trash of the ass build y'all make. So I, I know you and Siggy was complaining. So I know to avoid it. I made it. I made yeah, yeah, it. Whatever, whatever character <laughs> has the dual, uh, the dual wield, like daggers. Yeah, daggers. Yeah. Oh, uh, daggers. No, yeah, no, bro. Okay, I was a dagger dude. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I, I will say, at least from what I noticed, um, I first started off with the the dude that has the spears, so the infantry dude. That's what okay. I started with. So I had dual wielding spears and javelins, and I thought the parry was all right. But I will say I did notice a difference in the parry the moment I switched over to the long sword, and I had like a heavier weapon. Mm -hmm. um, when I wielded the one like the, the the heavy like guts like sword, if you will, um, I did notice that the parry was way more forgiving. I don't know if they actually have changed how the parry functions based off of the weapon types you're using, mm -hmm. and that would have me curious because I know there is there's already just like Elden Ring. I know that there's a percentage on certain weapons that's like okay this will block this amount of damage this will block this amount of damage so like if you have like certain shields like an elden ring once you have like the really bulky one that could like negate a lot of the damage like by just or almost 100 yeah. percent, yeah exactly i'm wondering if there's hidden parry values for the weapons so like not all the weapons based off of how like i guess thick the weapon is or how strong the weapon is how easy it is for it to deflect other weapons compared to mm -hmm. like a weaker like a more nimbler weapon that maybe like I have one, I, that's the thing I'm curious about. I, I I think I need somebody who's like a specialist at like analyzing this stuff to be able to tell me. But I wonder if if you're using daggers, if the play style is supposed to be you're supposed to be dodging a lot more, and then if you're using more of the heavy weapons, you need to parry them because you don't have a lot of. That's dodging a fair anymore. point. I mean, like I yeah, wonder. You can't if really parry with a dagger if you think about it. Like that, that, that's yeah. what I'm. That's what I'm curious. I'm wondering. That's why I was because I was trying to remember what homeless because homeless said she re, she reset her class multiple times too when I was talking to her about it. And I was curious about that when she was bringing up the parry too, because I was like, I wonder what weapons you guys are using. If you feel like there's a different, like an actual noticeable difference, because I felt like I noticed one. Um, but I, I kind of ran into the same thing that TBH did when he was talking about that that stupid horse boss. Um, I, it was just a boss. I felt like the parry wasn't working as I thought it should have. Like I feel like there was so many times I felt like it should have worked. Like I should have parried his attack and it didn't parry. Um, and on top of that, every time he landed a hit on me, even if I guarded the hit, he would take so much health from my life. Like I would lose like all my health. I'd be down to 10% health by just guarding, not even deflecting. And I'm talking about, I have a heavy sword. Um, and this dude could just literally like, if I get hit with like one hit, I'm probably dead. Certain of his attacks, he one shots me. Like I just can't survive it. Um, some people in my chat were like, maybe you're just under level. And I was like, well, I feel like I'm like on par with where the leveling is. Like I was like level 30 something, I think when I was doing it. But um, yeah, I, I, I am kind of like with JG. I, I only played Liza P not as much, but I will say I feel like Lords of the Fallen is definitely more Elden Ring and Dark Souls than it is more like if Sekiro. Like I feel like the deflecting mechanic is it's there, but I don't think it's as prominent as um, like Sekiro was. Um, the, it's kind of weird because the first boss, the angel uh, boss, I feel like that boss was like teaching you to parry. Like it definitely felt like a boss fight where it was like, yeah, you need to parry her. Cause like she's, she's very slow, but she's very, it's very easy to deflect her. But then there was other bosses later down the road. Like the, the once you get to the horse boss, I'm curious when you, what you do. But I noticed I had a way easier time beating him and I was able to finally beat him by just ignoring deflecting altogether and just trying to just dodge all of his attacks. Just dodge, dodge, dodge. Are there eye frames on the dodge? Yes, there are. There are a hundred percent iframes on the dodge. Yeah. I should have killed I need by to know, baby. Things. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I know that was the thing about Liza P, right? Like during the demo, they didn't have iframes on him when you would dodge, which was stupid. It was like, no. why would you do that? 
But um, yeah, I think they, I don't know if they added them. Did they add them to the Dodge now? Uh, by game? default, it doesn't work very good, but you can get an upgrade that gives you a double Dodge. And when you get that, you get an iframe on And it's good? Yeah, because okay. yeah. like yeah. I said, I, I dodged the entire game. I didn't really deflect. Okay. Yeah, yeah. it was oh, interesting because yeah. you, you were talking about the Angel Boss and I tried parrying and the funny thing was, and, and again, it might just be the weapons that I have, but I was parrying and like, I can hear the the sound that said that I was parrying. I don't like the sound either. Still, but I was still losing life. So I'm like, hello? Wait, like, wait, 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 wait. When you, when you feel like you parry, what sound effect or what like visual do you see? It was, I don't know, it was kind of like a ching sound or, or kind of like a, a magic sound, but I don't know if it was her or ching. if that was just me. Like like a yeah. void sound, right? Like a whoo, like whoo, yeah, like yeah, 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 like Is that. the effect like blue for you when you do that? Is that that's what the perfect is. It was like, I thought it was If it's like red, purple. then that's not, okay, purple, I don't know. blue, I don't know. okay. That's but, as long as it's not red. But, it, yeah. but in any case, I knew that I was doing it, but it was treating it as if I was doing a regular block because I was still losing life. I was getting gray life at that point. Wow. And I could get it back, but I ended up doing that. Like, I tried that a few times, and then I found I was like, man, like, if I don't hit her, then I'm going to just lose my life, right? And, yeah, it's gone. And so I still ended up doing it because I wanted to get the maximum amount of damage. I wanted to stagger her. So I did that, and then, but I, I kept failing, and then I tried dodging, but I was like, man, this is taking way too long. And then once you got to the second phase, I was like, man, F this. Like, I could barely hit her as is, mm -hmm. and there's barely any opportunity to even get to her. You know, once she gets done with her animations, doing whatever she needs to do. So, like, I'm going to go back to parrying. I'm just going to say F it. Take my gray life, you know, every time I parry. And then I'm just going to keep, you know, hit her in between. Counter attack. Just so I can yeah. get my life back. Yeah. Just like a counter attack. So, it was weird. But, like I said, it, you know, it may be just a thing with the build that I have and the weapons that I have. That when I parry, it's not, it's not doing it as intended. And I'm still losing life in the process, even if I perfect parry. Yeah, I'm trying to remember if when I perfect parried, if I was still losing hot life. I, I just don't remember because I haven't played it in the past couple, like two days. But um, that's a good yeah. thing I need to check just to see if like I'll look back at some footage and see if I was losing life when I also was perfecting or not. Um, other than that, I, I, I will say I do like the art direction of the game. I think there's definitely some spots where I was like, oh, wow, this looks really cool. Um, it looks it looks like a Dark Souls game, to be perfectly honest. Like it looks like. Yeah. You could have told me it was like like an expansion to Dark Souls Three, and I would have believed you. They don't hide their like, inspiration. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, they they really just hide in the, the sleeve. There is, it's definitely um, gothic with a little bit of like eldritch horror with like the lamp. I think the unique there is uniqueness to the game because of the lamp. The lamp does something that is very unique that I've not seen another Souls game. That's what I was about to ask. Uh, yeah, because there's two different worlds, and there's like a light and a dark world. Like explain that. Yeah. And like what does that do for the game? I was gonna ask, does that matter? The, so the umbra, it, yeah. yeah the umbra so it definitely matters uh it's incorporated not only into like traversal so like in order to get to certain sp spaces you sometimes have to go into the umbra world to see it so like there might be a bridge you walk up on and it's like broken right and you'll be like oh well, i can't get across here but then you pull your lamp up and you see in the the umbra world there's like a bones or something like that that connect the bridge so you can go into that world and you can do that the, the con is is that it's a it's a high risk high reward so when you go into the the dark let's call it the shadow realm when you go into the shadow realm you uh basically enemies are constantly spawning near you and attacking like these like they're very crappy weak creatures but it's a constant game of attrition when you're in that world and you get this dread effect that will like slowly bake it where like your health just starts inching away. So you can't stay in there forever, but you can like farm that area. You can farm the shadow realm to get a lot of experience. But the thing, they have another mechanic, which is basically like a, like a, a watcher mechanic where as the longer you stay inside of this, um, this world and granted some of the, uh, enemy types in there are very irritating to deal with. Um, the longer you stay inside this world, like this eye starts like to like, it's like the eye of Sauron, like it, it watches you. And then once you stay in it for too long, it goes red. And then they have, a, they send, they dispatch this like assassin, this red, like assassin cool. spirit. Yeah. And it, so it chases you and it's like, it will not stop. Like it will chase you until you, you try to fight it. Like you basically force your way out. Um, Another thing that you could, which is really cool, which I thought was really cool, if you put the lamp up and there's like enemies on the other side, the other like in the shadow realm, they'll actually see you like peering into the into their realm and they can come and attack you. And uh, even though you're in like the regular world, if they hit you while you have the lamp up, they'll actually send you into the Umbra world. Um, and it's it's also used in uh, uh, like how you know how like Sekiro, if you died, you could come back one more time and fight again. They do the same thing with the lamp where it's like if you die in the like real world, you then re you have a second life. So you come back to life in the umbral world. 
Um, and then there's also on top of that, there's puzzles that involve you going into the Umbral world in order for you to like unlock a door that you can't see in the physical world. Yeah, you gotta do you gotta do that to traver- to actually progress in the game. And then on top of that, um, some of the bosses also like a boss might have an extra shield or something where you can't hurt them until you like use the lantern to like break this like uh, buff that you can only see in the Umbral world. So you have to like put up the yeah to dodge this, this dude from killing you. Put up your lamp, find this thing, and then grab it, rip it out. And you can also like use your lamp in combat to like rip their souls out to slow them down and then deal like bonus damage to them. So it's very involved. It's not like just a gimmick. It's I mean, it's a gimmick overall, like, you know, for like a marketing reason. But it's there's a lot of mechanics that it has that involve gameplay traversal puzzles that allows it to feel unique and not just like, oh, I'm just playing Dark Souls again, you know? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. 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 So that, but some so people say nice. it's a little clunky. Some I, I don't judge you if you want to say um like some yeah. people might feel it's a little clunky with the lantern, but I don't know what you felt about that. I feel like it was more clunky like just with the 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 gameplay. Like I, I felt like it 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 wanted to be more smooth in the gameplay, but it just didn't end up that way. And again, it then may go back to it being you know unoptimized or maybe i would like dropping frames in certain spots like i feel like Mm -hmm. uh even when me and homeless were playing like i said it may also came down to internet but when me and her were playing like sometimes i was hitting enemies or she was hitting enemies and the other person didn't even see it we were like what is going on here so so that's not the smoothest and like i said i just hope that they end up smoothing all of that stuff out um but like i said it was it was the pairing for me it was a, the unoptimization, and it was when I was in in multiplayer, and it just it just felt a little weird. There was even a, a spot in. I need to find out if this is an issue where in multiplayer or if this is intended. But I had like an area that I could go to, and homeless couldn't go through it. It wasn't like a. I don't think it was a dungeon or anything, but she literally cannot go through. So I wonder, is that an intended mechanic where like, even if you're in multiplayer or in co-op, that you can only go, whoever's the host can only go in certain spaces and the other person can't. And I even like came back and I like, we tried to go in at the same time and she still got stuck. Like there was literally the the um, the um moth wall that she couldn't get through. So mm. I'm like, I'm like, bro, I need to ask the devs, like, is that intended? Like, is this an area? Like, are there just certain areas that are gonna be scattered with that within the game that if you're in co-op, the other person just can't go through no matter what. So, so that's another weird thing. Like there, there are so many questions, like what else right now um like i said i'm not gonna fault them because you know the the game just came out so hopefully they get all this stuff squared away um with the optimization and uh and whatever issues might be going on whenever you're trying to play co-op but it's all right so far i want to stick with it maybe i would choose another class maybe just a class isn't working for me or i may just uh, instead of dual wheel daggers i may like get something else like just get like a regular sword or something and, and try to still stick it out but i was like i was feeling a little frustrated in that first boss i was like man i can't beat this freaking boss like if i if i can't parry then it's just not going to work um i end up getting through it but um I, i'm i'm not i'm not the most confident about when i get to this fourth boss that you're talking about so i'm like man if i get body i'm about to quit and choose somebody else <laughs> damn how's the story in this is, is it interesting um there's some cool stuff um so far it seems to be doing that whole like the whole idea is that there's this um Fat's name, but there's like a demon that's trying to, that they ins- the humanity enslaved, and now he's trying to like poke his head back out of, I guess, like the Umbral world or whatever it is. Um, and so you're part of these this group of people that are like set to like stop him from returning. And so your job is like there's these like light beacons that are in the sky in different parts of this map, and your job is to go to each of these beacons and uncorrupt it. Um, but then as you go and you're uncorrupting it, you basically see like I, I guess like hypocrisies where it's just like you know humans that are doing stuff that's just like hey that doesn't seem right that's not american um so um yeah that's like the best way i could like describe it from what i perceive right now like i I don't have a fine tune but i've been kind of paying attention i've been like okay like it is it's straightforward i don't think it's anything crazy there hasn't been like a plot twist yet but it it seems to be hinting at stuff but then again i I think i'm still too early in the game then so nobody made a magic build no, I'm not playing no magic build. I'm surprised on, Jay no, didn't I, make a magic build. That's how Mickey you beat Mouse, up, right? no, Mickey Mouse no, build. No, I'm good off that. <laughs> I told you, I literally did that one time, and now I'm like the magic guy. 
Yeah, you Bro, go ahead. You play cool. the cleric. You play the uh, magic. Uh, magic is cool, but like you can still do magic. Like you can still like pretty much on any build. Like you, once you once you uh, progress through the game, you can get magic skills. So yeah. that's what I said I was gonna do. I was like I don't want to do a full magic build. Like I want to get in there and, and and slice some shit up. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, overall, would y'all recommend this game though, based on what you played so far? Mm, how much is it? I think it's seventy. I mean, let me look. TBD, TBD. To be determined. Mind. I yeah. feel, yeah, I feel like I need to play more of it. I would say, um, the, like a lot of the. To be fair, like if you've heard stuff about the optimization, um, yeah, a 70. lot of it has been fixed. A lot of it has been fixed because a lot of people that were showing clips and stuff of this was they were playing it pre-patched. But a lot of the patchings that they have done seem to have improved in performance. It's still not great, but it's not. It, it's kind of serviceable. There's like parts of the game though. I do feel like yeah, the the optimization could be better. And what version um, y'all playing? Uh, PC. I'm on PC as well. Mm, I got it on PS5. I'm gonna start that next week. I heard the week. Xbox version is having the most amount of problems, but uh, I heard they're working to patch to fix that. So, um, I, I don't know. It, it's weird. I, I feel like I can't. I feel like it would be wrong for me to give a recommendation at this point. I just not. I haven't just seen enough. Yeah, I'll give it a little bit more time. Yeah, it's not something I can just immediately be like, oh yeah. It's not at that point yet. Okay, okay. Maybe I'll have an opinion next podcast by the time that comes around. We'll also be talking Spider Man, I'm sure. Because next week, from the time of this recording, Spider Man drops. So that'll be a fun conversation. Oh, God. Uh, everybody, oh, man. Everybody's screaming oh, Game man. of the Year. You don't think it's going to be Game of the Year, Ethos? No. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, um, it's going to be God of War Ragnarok, uh, Deja Vu all over again. Oh, you know, your expectations, oh, people. Yeah. Oh, no. They're, gonna, they're setting themselves up just like they did last year, bro. So um, I'll, I'll right. definitely be laughing when they set themselves up to. I don't know about Ragnarok. I don't think it'll be as many what? shitty puzzles in Spider Man. I don't know. Oh, no, I, mean, I just I just mean his expectations. Of oh, okay, okay, yeah, yelling, yeah. It's going to be game of your game of year. And then it comes out and it was just like, it didn't beat. <laughs> it didn't beat Elton Ring, so they were just like... Did the last yeah. Spider-Man have this much hype? I don't it had remember. hype, but it didn't have as much hype. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I think part of it is because of Spider-Verse. I think Spider-Verse, especially because it came out this year, I think a lot of that is driving the hype of this and because of Miles. I do... This is what I think. And no, it's that sad. final that final boss fight with Doc Ock, I remember that shit. That was fire. My, the original one. It was, but again, like I can't stress this enough. I feel like... And it was the same way I felt about Ragnarok. I felt like when Spider-Man came out, even when Spider-Man the first one came out, I was like, I don't think this is a game of the year contender. Because I remember what we when we all said about the game was like, it feels like it was just like, it's an Arkham game. Like they just copied Arkham. It's a solid. But there's nothing really. Eight, it's basically. a solid superhero game. Like it, it, it's just a really good superhero game. But like it still has the same like kind of like boring side quest structure, Ubisoft type of build of the of the thing. The get gameplay MJ, is cool. Bro. Get this the MJ crap shit out of here. really fucking irritated me. That really stopped me from being game of the year. That Those MJ missions were terrible. I don't know why that got all the way thrown into the That's how they game. changed their face? Yeah. Yeah, I don't really care about that, but Boy, like she busted. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. She busted <laughs> and you know that's I, what the actual I, actor looks like, right? I guess I don't care. Hey, I don't care. Care. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm they sorry. changed it to look I'm like sorry. the actor. I was like, Yeah, that's a real person, you guys. And know. also <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I to the, I'm sorry. I still I still think the OG, the original Peter looked better than the one they changed. I, I just the voice that he has and the, the, the face he has, I feel like they don't match. Like it matches when he has the mask on, but the moment he takes the mask off and he looks as he, he looks like a like a teenage kid, I, I like like a young kid, like a thirteen year old. I, I just can't. It's hard for me to like match that face compared to how I feel like the OG one was. Like I feel like that one was way more like seems like someone who's like you know out of college or in college, like a senior or something like that. Definitely older, wiser, and felt like definitely he could be a mentor to Miles. This version, this new version of him, I just feel like he looks too young to be like a mentor. To I don't like, care what Peter looks like. Stuff. I'm just confused of why they keep changing his face. Like what what purpose is? I don't remember why it was. There's some reason why they changed the face model, but I can't remember what it was. Something maybe about the tech or something. I, I don't remember. It's just confusing but, for the continuity know, and everything. Yeah, um, I, I but I think. I think it's going to be a similar thing to Ragnarok. I think the game's going to come out and it's going to be very solid. But I'll say the same thing about Ragnarok. The story has to be amazing. It, like it, That's why I said the only way it can win game of the year is the story has to be astronomically like the best Spider-Man 
writing we've ever seen of all time for it to, I feel like, to be game of the year. Because if it just comes out where it's like, well, the open world activities and everything else is still very similar to Miles Morales with just maybe a couple of little tweaks here and there, but it's still ultimately the same type of game that we played that's very similar to Miles Morales, but like a new story and, you know, that's it. I don't think that's going to be enough. Uh, they got to do something really, really nice and really big for it. So, like, I think, like what you said, there's a lot of bangers coming out this year, and I... If they don't do something that really lets it stand out to be something like, oh, my God, like that's something completely like, you know, out of the box. I don't think it has a chance of beating potentially two other games that I think right now are top dogs. I don't know why they didn't put co-op in this game. That also hurts it, I think, too. I think if it had been co-op, I feel like then it would definitely have a chance. But like two buddies swinging around, that would have been fire. 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 Yeah. Well, they let yeah. you do it in Gotham Knights. <laughs> uh, exactly. Really. Your laugh says it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. 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 Not really. Yeah, <laughs> night. We, what we thought it was, it wasn't. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if the, the opinion changes when that comes out. Um, yeah. Let's talk about a game that is out right now. Uh, we're talking a little bit, a bit about that uh, goddamn Mortal Kombat 1. Uh, that came out since the last podcast. New fighting game from NetherRealm. Um, since th- when the last Mortal Kombat happened, the whole universe got reset, and Liu Kang is now the god, and he kind of reset. It's like some Earth set, uh, Earth Two type stuff. All your favorite characters are there, but they changed the whole storyline. Um, so yeah, it features a new story mode, uh, a new cameo system. Basically, it's like um, assists in um, Marvel vs. Capcom, where basically you can call out certain characters. Which, by the way, certain characters are you can't play as them, but they're locked behind the cameo, like Jax. Uh, I, don't, I don't understand uh and you use those to extend the combos it's got online play um it's got towers and then a new mode what's the what's the board game mode called do you remember what it was called i forgot it's got a new board game mode i don't know because i stopped playing this shit this shit was a disappointment to me i'm gonna go ahead and say it. i don't care uh not that i had high expectations because i've always been more of a street fighter guy anyway i think the core gameplay with mortal kombat 1 is really good um like it's it's if you're a mortal kombat fan you're gonna be right at home and then with the new cameo system being able to summon people in to extend those combos i've seen some sick stuff on twitter but the thing is if you see those sick clips on social media it'll make you think that this game is freaking amazing but like i feel like mortal kombat 1 right now in its current state is street fighter 5 when it launched like it's just lacking content once you finish the story which is only like four to six hours depending on your skill level the only thing to do is just hop online uh but like the thing is ranked is mad laggy so like people haven't been playing it as much uh there's no private lobbies there's no cross play there is king of the hill which because every time i tweet there's no private lobbies mortal kombat fans there's king of the hill i don't want to fucking play king of the hill i want to play private lobbies i want to invite friends in and then this person can play that person you can do it in street fighter you could have 16 people in your private lobby and you can run sets and practice you can't practice with your friends or just get some games in with your buds in Mortal Kombat, which is like, to me, a basic functionality in a fucking fighting game. You have to play King of the Hill. So if you fucking lose, you're not going to get any better. You're not going to be able to practice. You got to wait until it's your turn. To me, I don't care. Whack. I don't care if I piss off the Mortal Kombat fan base. What y'all think? Uh, Jay, did you get a chance to play this? Yeah, so I remember I played it uh, like a few days after it came out. And that was actually when, when Ace was here. So I uh, went straight into the tutorials, did all that. And then me and Ace ran some sets. And that was the last time that I played it. Because like I said, it was just other games out. Yeah, it was other games out. But when I found out about the private lobby stuff, I mean, I already put myself at a disadvantage because I got it on PC. And PC already didn't have any crossplay, so I couldn't play against anybody else unless they had the PC version, anyways. So, um, so that was, you know, that was already a, a detriment. And I don't know when they're ever going to put it in there. We still don't have anything, but yeah, I mean, you're you're totally correct there. Like, no private lobbies. I, I totally don't understand why it isn't in there. It is uh, definitely giving me a huge remnants of Street Fighter Five. And you know, shout out to Capcom. They actually, you know, did right by Street Fighter Six. So, like, they realized, hey, we made a big mistake with Street Fighter five like no matter how many dlc characters and other stuff that we throw at you the game wasn't finished when it came out and that, and that was just a you know point blank of it and unfortunately mortal kombat one is suffering the same fate um the one positive thing that i can't say and what people thought was going to be a negative was again when you mentioned the cameos people were initially like oh hell no i want to use the cameos why are you doing this i just want to play you know just straight 1v1 but the cameos like once people got used to it especially the mortal kombat veterans the nrs veterans then i didn't hear any more complaints about that 
the only thing that people are saying now is like i wish that i can play with this character they should have kept the, the cameos to like side characters in the story and like the main characters they should be playable that's yeah that's yeah. the one critique i'd have yeah i don't yeah i don't agree you know why they did that because again there are just certain characters that people do want to play with i mean maybe they didn't want the roster to be like ultimate mortal kombat-esque maybe further on down the line maybe you know some of these characters will be playable characters um so i don't know i don't know the reasoning but again they're already doing you know a whole bunch of dlc characters you know down our throats that they already had planned and, and already got leaked before the game even came out so you know that's neither here nor or there but i think the the core mechanics you should have in the game day one or at least like close to it because not having those mechanics kind of again puts a a bad light on your on your game so I mean, the, the NRS veterans are going to enjoy it no matter what, because, again, that's a community. But anybody on the outside, like, if they're trying to get into it, it's going to be hard to get into it um, when, you, when you know you already have these sweats um, who are just, you know, they already know the tag. They already know what uh, what cameos are going to synergize. Like, Serena was a freaking uh, a meta cameo for the longest until people found Cyrax, and Cyrax became meta. So, like, they're just those certain cameos or characters that people are going to stick with. So it, it is what it is. But like I say, I, I have no no real reason to play it if I can't do private lobbies. That's, that's just what I want to do. I don't want to just get online and just face these these sweats all the time, which is going to freaking infinite combo me until until I'm ready to quit. So Yeah. Uh, also, the online, it fucking sucks. Uh, flip a coin. Uh, I would I would say, like, with Street Fighter, about 90% of the time I have a smooth experience. That net code is amazing. Uh, Mortal Kombat, 50% of the time you will run into laggy opponents and it is really bad. That's another reason I don't want to play. Like, I hate to break it. I like Mortal Kombat fans are like, when I talk about this shit on Twitter, they're having a real hard time grasping this shit. Street Fighter 6 raised the bar. Uh, they got to come correct with the quality of life changes in the online. This online is fucking dog shit. And then on top of that, like JG said, they're fucking sweating, bro. These niggas is lagging, doing 100 hit combos and shit like that. Like, I hate to break it to you unless you're trying to go pro in this shit outside of the story there's nothing for you in this fucking game and like to me like this game is probably the biggest disappointment of 2023 to me like it is a good game at its foundation the core gameplay but everything else is undercooked in my opinion and to me like this is one of the most disappointing games i was like damn i was kind of hyped for this shit but i was like I, I don't feel inspired to sweat or get better like you y'all see me i play i've been playing street fighter all summer and like i i'm still playing it uh grinding the rank like i don't feel inspired to play this shit uh I don't know. I feel like they dropped the ball. I know they're going to patch it, but right now they're just focused on dropping DLC because the day in which we're recording this is the day they revealed Omni-Man, the new trailer, which, you know, it looks cool, but then I remembered it's going to lag, so I really don't care. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I would, I'd put this in one of the biggest disappointment brackets, but, you know, pros are going to love it. It's going to be big in, you know, the pro circuit or whatever. Just I don't think there's anything for here for people who are not trying to go pro, and that's disappointing. Did you get to play Mortal Kombat at all? Do you care? I, I know there's one of the few fighting games you do like, Ethos, right? Um, yeah, I didn't. Uh, I played the last. I played the last couple of ones um, on the Switch. <laughs> we don't want to talk about uh, Switch first. Yeah, I have not played. Yeah, I have not. I have not played this one on the Switch. I haven't bought this one yet. But um, yeah, I I kind of play Mortal Kombat for the story more than I do that. So now that you're telling me that, like, really th the story is really short, and on top of that, you're just there's nothing else left. I, I'm thinking I'm just gonna wait till it's like a bargain bin, and then I'll buy it and play did, it. Did you plan to play it on the Switch? I was until I saw the gameplay. Now I'm oh, okay. Go I was on. Have you seen? Oh, yeah. yeah, I have. The last oh, one I played on the Switch, Eleven, I played on Switch, and that one was actually pretty solid. It looked pretty decent uh, on the Switch. I don't know what what happened here with the new one. That's kind of weird. They rushed this one out. That's for yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. That, that one like looks terrible. Else. Yeah, they rushed it out. Yeah. Normally, so, normally, uh, like I be getting on like the PS4, Xbox One people when they be complaining about the lack of cross cross platform. But I, I'm, I'm gonna kind of side with them on this. Why did you put out this dog shit ass Switch version? Which there's gameplay on the screen right now when you guys are watching, but you didn't put it on the. P it would have looked better on PS4 and Xbox One. Um, I, I think that was a little bit unfair to them. You might as well just made it if you're gonna struggle to make this damn version. But then again, it don't got crossplay, so can't nobody play with each other. So it wouldn't matter. I mean, maybe the PS4 and the Xbox One version would look like this too, and then more people would be complaining about it. Mm. Didn't the last one have crossplay? Yeah, it did. That's the crazy part, ain't it? That's crazy. Yeah, 11, I, yeah, the last I one had all the. The eleven was good. I thought eleven had like a lot of uh, stuff. That's why it was really eleven. Good. Yeah, eleven was good. It's it's like um, this is Street Fighter Five switch places. 
Yeah, Damn, and that's, bro. that's unfortunate. That's Meanwhile, crazy. Tekken 8, man, they're releasing a lot of like good features. So I'm hoping that they don't drop the ball next year when that game comes out. Cause they have a lot of features that like will help you. Like if you really want to get into the lab, like they have some really, really good stuff that you can get into. It's not just a simple practice mode um that they have you doing there. So like I said I hope that they have cross play. I hope that everything is 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 tight. I hope that net code is good. And I think we'll we'll have a bang on our hands with Tekken 8 next year. Dear fighting game developers, the casual market does matter. If you get the casual market, it'll give you bigger viewership for your game. Even when the pro tournaments start, you also might inspire the next big player. Your sales will be better. I don't know why they just want to appeal to these pros. You see the same fucking faces on these damn circuits, man. Let's get somebody new. And the way you get somebody new is you include casual features to help ease people into the game. Everybody starts as a casual, okay? Anyways, Modern Warfare 3. Speaking of casual games. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Call of Duty, the king of casual games. Although if you has a Call of Duty player, they think it's a sweaty game. Uh, high skill game, I mean. Uh, the beta is definitely happening. Sweaty. Yeah, it's definitely sweaty. <laughs> the, um, the beta for Modern Warfare 3 is going on at the time in which this recording happened. I ain't play it because I don't care. Uh, they're not going to get me with these maps. This is $70 DLC. Fun fact, this was supposed to be Modern Warfare 2 DLC. Then they decided to charge $70 for it because they didn't have anything else to put out. Um, JG got some time with it. I don't know if Ethos played it, but uh, what, 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 how are you feeling about Modern Warfare 3? Just real quick, Jay. I'm going to keep this short and sweet. It's like Modern Warfare 2, the new one, with, with the old maps. I mean, that's it. I mean, old, you have the old maps. You have new guns. And, and and that's it. I mean, you're really just playing the old maps. Like it's just like nostalgia, which is fine if you're into that. But to to go through the the whole thing of charging seventy dollars for for old maps that you know now we can't complain about not liking these maps because we love the majority of them in Modern Warfare Two or or the original Modern Warfare. It's kind of crazy. So I mean, it is what it is. Like it's really nothing else to say about this. Either you're going to play the game or you're not. I don't think that anything I can say or TVH or Ethos could say would change your mind or, or sway your mind. Like, oh, this game is good. This game is not. I think at this point, it's Call of Duty. You're already going to make up your mind. You know whether you're going to play it or not. The one positive, it's not going to happen with this one, but the one positive, which we'll talk about later, is you know Activision finally got acquired, so maybe you'll be able to play no Game Pass soon enough. <laughs> Game Pass, you baby. These, you think these old maps from Modern Warfare One and Two will hold people's attention in the long run? Yeah, they will. Because I think there are just those diehard fans that are just like, "Oh my God, I'm tired of these new maps." Because a lot they're of the booty. new maps, but yeah, they're all yeah, they've all been really, really bad. Like I don't know who's been designing these maps, but yeah, like literally a lot of people regard the maps from Modern Warfare One and Two, at least in the you know the Modern Warfare series, as some of the best maps. Um, so it, it'll get those people for sure. Like I was playing a couple of maps. I'm like, oh yeah. Like I remember going over here, like I remember my little strats or whatever, but again, it, it wasn't enough. Like I even played rust. I was like, oh shit. Like here we go again with rust. Um, but it, it still didn't make me like, like, oh my God, I remember this. I, I think the last one, you said you had more than that for me. <laughs> that, <right. laughs> that's exactly what I remember it, it reminded me I remember it reminded me of freaking making videos back then because that was a modern Damn. warfare two days so the xbox like, yeah. fly as yeah, avatar yeah, as a, mm, playing freaking okay. high rise bro like that was crazy <laughs> so <laughs> did you did you so, um did you notice any gameplay difference i've seen a couple of people say they said that the movement gameplay feels better yeah the, the movement or whatever the is, movement, is it i mean because they, they, they feel different slide, they put slide canceling back in so with slide canceling back in everybody's just running around like a freaking crackhead like it's mm. like they're they're, they're on crackhead you know 10 times crack this mm. time so um so it's definitely faster um i'll say that it was it was super fast um for what i can see and i mean but the game uh, the gunplay feels you know almost you know more or less the same there's no real differences there but yeah it's just the fact that you can slide cancel so a lot of people are just taking advantage of it and they're just sliding all across the place and and just you know running at you and jumping and doing all types of stuff so um so that's the main difference that you know they they got that back for all the uh the call of duty vets fake ass around, they, players. They, they hated they hated that <laughs> they hated no fly then, um, before we started recording didn't one of y'all say that like you have to launch modern warfare in order to get to this or some shit like that like, so know, on the pc version i don't know about consoles correct so call call but on pc if you're on the battle net launcher you just it's just call of duty now like there's no there's no separation between 
any of the Call of Duty, any of the recent Call of Duties that came out. It's just Modern Warfare, it, you know, Modern Warfare 1, 2, and 3. You just launch Call of Duty, and then they'll just have separate sections whenever you launch the game on what you want to do. So it, it's just a launcher now. Yeah, so when I, was, I download on Steam, it's the same thing. I just downloaded Call of Duty. Just like, like when Overwatch 2 was in beta, and then you had to launch yeah. the same EXE file. It's almost like it's the same Call mm -hmm. of Duty file And the you're same launching. publisher is doing it. That's crazy. <laughs> That's right? crazy. Yeah. <laughs> maybe something is, maybe there's something there. <laughs> you guys are getting fucked, man. So, yeah, I still yo, have to I'm, I'm, yo, 100 I'm, gigs, bro. I'm standing. Yeah, I'm not, not if you see me playing this game, because I got it for free. I'm not buying this shit. I'm standing on it. I'm not paying $70 for no I'm waiting for the Game Pass, yeah, Game Pass something. I'm not paying for it. No, thank you. I will only play it like if the majority of GI or like the community plays it. But Homeless already told me she's not playing it. Blake said he's not playing it. So the only people that might play it is K. I know Chaos was talking about it. And then, you know, maybe Radical will play it. But yeah, it seems to be like everybody's out just because I think I think everybody's just pissed that you're paying $70 for basically Modern Warfare 2 with the old map. Make it $20, man. Make it $20. I'd play it for $20. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would too. I would get it for twenty, but seventy yeah, is too 20, rich for my blood. Not in this yeah. economy, bro. Yeah. Uh, what is Joe Biden doing? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's move over to another game. I actually forgot about this one until right before we started recording. Uh, Cyberpunk got a big update. Cyberpunk two point with some DLC that dropped. Um, I know Ethos and Chaos and a bunch of other people in the Discord. Even uh, I seen Cami on Discord playing. I was like, "You playing Cyberpunk?" Uh, apparently, it's lit right now. Between this and the anime, I don't know shit new what's going on with this. So you gonna have to break it all down, Ethos. What's going on in the Cyberpunk universe, and should we care? We back, baby. We back. <laughs> We're so fucking back. Uh, it's it's uh, it's been a long time. It's been a it's been a long road. A lot of suffering, a lot of infighting, a lot of trench warfare, but we got through it. Um, Cyberpunk is officially out. <laughs> That's basically the gist of it. Um, I guess like what uh, a lot of what CD Projekt's basically done is uh, they've updated the game now to 2.0, which has been like a huge overhaul of pretty much every aspect aspect of the game. Um, almost every single part of the game has been like touched, retouched, or completely uh, changed, um, redesigned. Um, a lot of the biggest like um, issues that people had with the game back in 2020 have been like fixed. Um, and then the second part of it is they announced and they launched um, Phantom Liberty, which is the expansion which is like a, a 25 hour, 20 to 25 hour expansion story that expands on the cyberpunk story. It's its own separate story, but it does intertwine within the main campaigns and it actually creates a brand new ending within cyberpunk. So there's a brand new ending um, and it actually causes choices that do impact the main campaign as well. Um, Idris Elba's in it. He does a phenomenal job. His character, some of the best character writing I've ever, some of the best writing I've ever seen. Um, all the characters in the new DLC are phenomenal. Um, they've added pretty much brand new gameplay systems. They've overhauled like all the perk systems. The, the, the combat systems have been completely overhauled. Um, um, all the gun mechanics, like everything, the cars, uh, what is it? You can now, um, how much shoot, is it? Uh, the cars. Uh, so the 2.0 update's free. So if you just want to like nah, replay the, the game again, oh, uh, it's 29. So 30 bucks. Damn. And that's it. 20 and 20 hours. That's a whole new game. It's basically a whole new game. I would argue and say, maps. I'm just saying you could have one or the other. Uh, and you know, cyberpunk been on sale a couple times for like how's five, it, 10 how's bucks. It running like cheap. in terms of performance. Oh, it's flawless. It's flawless. It, it, it has no optimization issues at all. It runs smooth on everybody's. Everybody's been saying how like miraculous it looks. I, I know you probably seen it on Twitter. Everybody's like, "Wow, I can't believe this game looks this good." Um, they added that new frame generation thing for the new graphics cards. Uh, so if you have like a four series, uh, basically they now have allowed AI to create frames for you. So oh, if you're, yeah. So <laughs> it's, it's called frame generation. It basically the 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 layman way of how it works is. Basically, an AI reconstructs your game's frame rate and adds frames to it so that you actually get more frames. So instead of it like trying to like, you know how it tried to like uh, optimize or, or it would dynamically change the like um, the resolution of it, right? Like it would put it at a lower resolution and then it would an AI would reconstruct it at like 4K. So it looks still good, right? This one is like not doing it's doing not only that, but it's actually um, it's like future predicting what frames are going to look like and it adds them in. Um, as you're playing the video game. So you actually can like push your, you can actually play games that are like uh, 
like to their maximum that your computer it's normally couldn't um, handle, and you could like play it on um, like maximum settings without what you're it describing. Ever it, it, it's almost like rollback net code for single player games, where it's predicting it, what's yeah. supposed to happen. And it, yeah, it that's for you. kind of what I would argue. I like again, I could be wrong about how it's generating because I haven't looked into the the science of how it's doing it. it it's magic. If that's what I'm sorry, it's, it's some witchcraft. They no, that actually makes me want to get a 40 series it. now. Like I've been looking for series an excuse to upgrade. Um, and I've noticed too, a bunch of the newer games have come out this year. Uh, since they've come out, they all have this brand new feature. Cyberpunk added it in. Um, Lords of the Fallen has it. I think Liza P has it too. Um, so like, yeah, if you ever feel like your game, like it, it basically will make sure your game will always run at like a crazy high frame rate. Like even if the game is like has optimization issues, it's still going to be able to run at like 60, 70, 80, maybe 120, 144, where normally your game would not be able to survive or do that. And I'm talking like with ray tracing maxed out, everything maxed. Um, my friend, uh, was it uh, Dan? He's been playing Cyberpunk like fully maxed out Psycho mode, like everything pushed to the max. And he's saying he's getting like 120 frames on it, which is insane. Um, I, 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 the best I can say to you is uh, if you were a fan of Cyberpunk, I mean, you probably already played this thing and loved it. If you liked Cyberpunk, but let's say you had a lot of issues with it or like it was crashing on you or you just couldn't, you didn't like it at the time because of like technical issues, but you wanted to really enjoy it, this is the perfect time for you to go back in. If you're a person that beat the game, the game feels like completely like a brand new type of game. So if you have the time and you want to, I definitely think it's time. The, honestly, I think any type of person that like at least saw a vision of what Cyberpunk could have been, or at least wanted to see that closer vision of what they originally showed, this is that version. It's as close as I think you're going to get to like what they originally showed back at uh, E3. It took them three years, which is what they they needed and they just, they should have gotten. Um, but yeah, the game is definitely, um, I, I honestly... It's so good. This DLC should be Game of the Year nominated. I'm not even joking. It's that good. If that was even possible, I would let it happen. But this is by far one of the. You think the we need a new category, DLC of the Year? I mean, honestly, like you said, TBH, it feels like a brand new game. I would actually classify this as a brand new game, and I would actually put it as Game of the Year. It would be right at, near the top uh, right now. Wow. It, it's okay. that good. I'm not even. I'm not fan. Fan. Yeah, I've seen you in chaos posting ride. memes it's and shit. Astronomically crying. good. Yeah, it's really good. It's insanely good. So I, I do highly recommend it, without a doubt. I might get it like on a Steam sale or something. Like some yeah, I want say other games you, to finish because I, I beat yeah, the original you know game already, and I was kind of mm-hmm. about it. Yeah, if you if you're an, like if you were like about it, but you like were like I kind of enjoyed it, but I kind of wish like if you felt like a lot of the technical things were the reason why you didn't really like get into it as much. I would say trying it again with the new game. It's it's it feels like a completely brand new game. So. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. There any any interest there, uh, Jay, on a uh, cyberpunk? Yeah, for sure. But like I said, I, I do this games. was yeah. <laughs> Too many. Much. I just I can't right now. I can't go back to it right now. But mm. I just I knew Ethos was going to immediately run to it. So. Oh yeah. I ran immediately. <laughs> uh, last game we got to talk about in the gaming leading conversation section is Ubisoft's new. Uh, speaking of DLC, Assassin's Creed <laughs> Mirage, uh, it's a full game. So for those unaware, Assassin's Creed Mirage was originally planned to be DLC. I guess they felt like there was enough content there that they felt confident to make it its own game. Uh, it's reported to take people on average 20 to 40 hours to finish. Um, they're only charging 40 bucks or 50 for the deluxe edition. Um, and it stars Bassem from Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which I hated for a multitude of reasons. Um, and apparently I learned from the video I uploaded, the Assassin's Creed community doesn't like Bassem either. He's apparently fucking annoying in Valhalla. Um, but Ubisoft loves him. They gave him his own game. Uh, takes place in Baghdad. Uh, they, this is like their whole boots to the ground marketing because I guess they heard the outcry of a certain segment of the Assassin's Creed community that just wants it to be like Assassin's Creed 1. Because in this game, basically all you can do is run and climb and stab. You are given some knives and smoke bombs and like some darts, some real basic tools. But this is a very boots to the ground type of Assassin's Creed. They even have the old style of Assassin's Creed 1 uh, tailing missions, which is crazy because I remember in the reviews, that was one of the main things people hated. But there's a lot of missions where you just have to walk behind somebody just close enough that you can hear the conversation or the pickpocket them, but not too close because then, you know, you got to restart the mission. 
uh i for me i'm gonna go ahead and say because I, I think i'm the only one that's played it here um i play it like a couple hours okay i'm gonna get to you that for me this shit is undercooked as fuck uh it should have just remained dlc i don't think i would be as hard on it if it was just dlc but since they're saying it's a full game um i'm gonna go ahead and say Bassem is my least favorite assassin in the series i fucking hate this nigga bro um he's not an interesting character he's not witty he's not funny hold on and- hold on hold on hold on He's the worst out of all the assassins. He, you think he's the absolute worst? At least, at least, at least with Connor, he was boring, but he was a brute, and 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 that nigga was Native American, so that was cool. Uh, and then with Arno, that nigga, was, Arno, hold on, Arno. Arno. Let me finish, let me, at least with Arno, that nigga was French. I don't know. And we got what? To, we got to hang you out with Napoleon. Wait, 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 and you got to hang out with Napoleon. Like I guess can you, that was. Can cool. you remind me? Can you can you recall anything about Arno? Anything? <laughs> hey, if you can give me yeah, one actually, thing. I can't. I can't. Okay. Okay. Can. Give me one thing. That nigga climbed a whole lot better than Bassem because this is another critique <laughs> no, no, I have of the game. Personality wise, can you give me anything? Anything of his personality you remember? Any funny thing he said or did? or something like that that you any that, memorable thing he has okay okay fine i'll put him on par with arno i don't like this character bro. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just let me dislike this nigga okay bro. who's who's the uh, your favorite who's even the still, top three in even the top three top three assassins uh, um etio cassandra and then um bayek okay yeah that's about what yeah, I play, I play I this shit, nigga. Yeah. Okay, I, 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 okay, whatever. Um, but what's the name? I still would put Arno above Bassem just because he had better parkour. Like that is true. The parkour in this game is fucking. He had horrible. a lot of good parkour. They've Unity, never made parkour Unity, that good. Despite Unity the bugs, top yeah. despite the bugs, Unity had the best parkour. Like that motherfucker was yeah. moving. Um, yeah, he, I, I went, so there's a video I watched on YouTube where he was comparing the 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 movement in yeah. um that game versus this one. It's insane. Night and day, like the shit you was pulling off. Have you, it looked have really you played cool. it recently? Like in no, the past, I heard years? it's amazing. It holds up, like visually and like mechanically. It surprisingly like is better than most of the that video made me want to play it again. I'm like, this game looks yeah. really good because I, I had a bad taste in my mouth. I played it before the patch when it was all. Bugged it was awful. Yeah. It was the worst launch ever. So like, yeah. it kind of made me want to go back and play. I think it. it's underrated now. I think now that they fixed it all, I, like I was replaying it. This was like a couple years ago when I was replaying. I was like, damn. I was like. This is kind of good. Like, I don't care about Arno. I, I really didn't care that much about Arno, but I like the world and the environment and the, the story, mechanics. Yeah. I was like, yeah, the story. I was like, this is kind of fire. Hold on. Yeah. Freaking so. Bassem, like I said in my video, Bassem is like the Brian Scalabrini of assassins. Um, he's the Jared Dudley of assassins. Um, 12th man off the bench. This dude is just mad regular, mad average. And I, I I guess that sounds cool on paper, boots on the ground. But I want to be a super assassin. I don't want to, like, if I want to do regular shit, I'll go outside and roll my dog. When and does I, this game take place? Um, It takes like place. Like in the timeline. Is it like the same time that Valhalla is happening or is it after? No, it's Valhalla? before. It's, it's his it's origin story. Before it's because, his origin. Yeah, by the time, yeah, by the time Valhalla happens. So he, then, then then he, he learn how he, get, he becomes an assassin. Up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. But this, so this is, is after this is origins, origin right? story. Yes, exactly. Right. And this yeah. is after origins because the hidden ones already established. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. In terms gotcha. of the timeline, okay. um, gotcha. yeah. This dude, he moves across like he's slow and clunky. He's breathing hard. Um, they went back to the more realistic climbing, so now you have to actually like grab onto something visible, which I'm okay with. I'm okay sure. with that. But the issue okay. is, is like he constantly is clipping inside of the environment. It's like jaggy and just like constantly just dropping animations. Like it just feels very undercooked. Like I said, it feels like DLC. It feels like it needed more time in the oven because the climbing is not fluid at all. Um, and then he doesn't have any. Okay, so they call it a boots to the ground game, right? But then right. your first within the first hour, you get your first assa- major assassination. You know, it plays the whole cutscene and hypes up the big bad guy. At the end of the mission, you're given an ability where you can teleport like Minato, the fourth Hokage, right? I'm like, what the fuck is this shit, bro? I thought this was the boots to the ground. So then like the game is super easy because this nigga can teleport everywhere. I'm like, this is boots to the ground. Maybe my definition changed. But I was like, I don't know. And then it's confusing in terms of the character, right? Because he's this slow fat fuck who could barely jump across the roof, but now he can teleport? I was like, I don't get I uh, This what, shit is um, like a six to me. I was like, eh. Does this thing do anything to the modern story? I haven't gotten that far to where I've seen anything modern. Have you, Jay? No, I, I, I'm sure I played even less than you because I haven't even gotten that first ability yet. We, so. we, we, we'd have to ask Ace because I just seen him tweet before we started. He beat the game already. So, yeah, so I saw he has the, yeah, uh, the ancestor. <laughs> or whatever, yeah. He's bad through it. Yeah. yeah. 
So, well, I just spoiled the game for okay. you. Yeah, after the first major, you're, you're probably close to it because it's only like it's an fine. hour or two it's, into the game. It's fine. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, I don't, I don't care. But and like oh. I said, I because y'all remember, I didn't play any Assassin's Creed until Odyssey. So, so you didn't I play totally, Origin. Oh, you missed no, out on the no, on the heyday. I didn't, then I didn't play Origin. Oh, you should have played Origin. I said, I, said I was going to go back. And this play man didn't play the one with the black man. That's crazy. Why did you play the black <laughs> man? <What? laughs> Bayek was great. Hey, Bayek was only, actually good. The only reason why I played Word, I, I played Odyssey, was because I was in the Ubisoft program. You got to right ride there, camels, so, so then I bro. tried it out. But that's the only reason why I played it because I was. I mean, you, I rode camels on this one too. But oh. yeah, um, yeah. Um, Bayek did it better. I, I agree. I, black, I would agree with that. <laughs> plus, it was black excellence. And plus, no man. I mean, I'm sure it got fixed now, but I remember no man. He's playing a game on PC, and that that joint was highly unoptimized when it came. Never out. Never played Origin Ubisoft was. on PC. No. Yeah, Origin was, but I played I played uh, Odyssey and Valhalla on PC, um, and they were both on for me. But anyways, um, so yeah, I'm Basim. His it's funny because like as I'm playing this, I'm like, bro, is that really how he got into the hidden ones? Like, I didn't even I didn't even like the way that he got into you know the hidden ones and became an assassin like it was it, it wasn't even inspiring he was just like hey, you know i need to do this for my people like that that was the main reason i just need to do this for my people and i know how to steal so i'm just going to do this just so i can get in the hidden ones like he didn't really have any real motivation and i'm like dang did the other assassins feel this way like was that was that the way that they got into you know being an assassin like i just felt like that was just pretty whack like he was just like uh, he, he basically forced his way into the hidden ones and and forced the way into being trained by you know the main person who was there because like she oh, came, she came she came over and she was like oh well you know this person this person had this so we need to figure out what's going on and he was just like oh i'm gonna do it and then like uh and then convinced his friend to like go in and try to steal whatever was in his box you know this, this treasure box for him and i was like that like it, it wasn't even it, it didn't move me at all and then like as i'm playing it was some other people in my chat and they were also it's funny because they mentioned unity like you all they were like man unity was actually really good and i was like i remember when that game came out people were shitting on that game that was so, a cyberpunk uh, <laughs> that was the, the, the og cyberpunk <laughs> that was the og cyberpunk yeah yeah i remember I, like i said i didn't play it but i remember like y'all were y'all were collectively like just saying this game was it bad was so um but yeah but people were saying they were like oh man unity was actually pretty good like compared to this and they were literally talking about everything that, um that tbh you know talked about as well why he didn't like the game so i'm like yeah i think collectively um even though this was supposed to be boots on the ground and ubisoft was promoting this game you know mirage is boots on the ground and bringing it back to its roots that was that was their main tagline bringing it back to its roots it it still didn't it still missed that mark to to bring it back to like the the original assassin's creed that people you know grew up to love so um you know even though they tried you know to get there they still failed to hit that mark and i mean it's it's just disappointing you know for the people who wanted to go back because i get why people didn't like odyssey and valhalla the reason why people didn't like those games were you know for me the reason why i liked it they were superhero games yeah they were that's and, the reason i, I liked, liked them it. but i understood why people didn't like them yeah again and, yeah and again i understand it, especially uh, even though i didn't play the original Assassin's creed but i understood why so bringing it back to its roots I, I get that you know what they were trying to but they they just missed it so and, you know it is what it is but i think i think again like the main thing here is just the character and the story so far from what i played is just uninspiring like i thoroughly enjoy odyssey story and and I kind of enjoyed Valhalla story, but the main thing with those two games was just too freaking long. Um, and you know, this was supposed to be DLC. I think it should have stayed as such instead of being a complete game. We just need that Japan game at this point. I just want that Japan game. Yeah. Uh, another thing I got to critique: the combat is ass. Um, and by the way, it not only is it ass, but it's it's lazy game design. So they purposely made the combat worse to force you to do stealth. And it's like they could have at least made him like a decent fighter. But it's like if, if you get pulled up on in this game, like you might as well just get wrapped, uh, just, just wrap it up and reset the mission. But then again, if you have to reset, you fucking suck at the game because this game is easy as hell. It was really weird to bounce between this and Liza P. I think I put that in the group chat because like the AI in this game is probably some of the worst I've ever seen in Ubisoft. I posted a clip on Twitter where like I'm literally whistling the F the dude. He's right in front of me and he's just like, where is he? What is that? Uh, must have been the win. I'm right in front of this dude. He just walks away and I just stab him in the neck. And it's a lot of that. It's like you can stab uh, a guard right in front of another one and they won't even react to this shit. Um, 
I'm just like, bro, did y'all QA test this game? Like Ubisoft's AI has been bad in the past, but like this is like probably the worst. Uh, it's it's jokingly bad. So it's like even though the combat's not viable, it's not too big of a deal because you don't even need it because the game is so damn easy. Um, another thing I didn't understand is in the game, Basim is a thief. You start off that way. And there's this thief mechanic in the game where you can rob anybody and it does this whole like um, Gears of War active reload button you have to press. And if you do that, you won't they won't know that you pickpocketed them. I'm just confused because once he becomes an assassin, you could still do that like that from the original games. What I remember, if you did anything that fucked with the civilians, it would knock you out of the animus. But once you become an assassin, you're still walking around robbing niggas. And I'm like, isn't he supposed to be a hero? You could still do that in. Uh, you could still. You could still do that in like Assassin's Creed. I thought it was for like, like the. Ancio. I thought it was just for like the missions though. Like, um, no. Like, uh, okay. I'm pretty sure you could right still there. pickpocket people when you were playing as Ezio, like in that's that Brotherhood. Mechanic. I'm pretty sure you could still I'm, pickpocket. I probably people. didn't do it. That's why you I couldn't remember. kill civilians if you if yeah. you tried to if you killed them that would cause the animus to, to collapse. But if you uh, robbed them, I'm pretty sure you. It was the fine. city has no life in this game either. Uh, there's no NPCs that you can talk to. There's no funny, interesting, witty dialogue. The side quest from what I've seen, just looking at historical monuments, it's just all very undercooked. They should have just made it like 20 bucks DLC. Uh, kind of, this kind of feels like one of those situations where Ubisoft had nothing to release and they wanted they to, had to do something. They wanted to appease their Crazy. board of directors. So we're going to call it a full game. But this is clearly it feels on par in terms of quality with um, you remember Assassin's Creed Liberation. I was just going to ask the that. one with the black girl on the PSP. Yeah. It, it feels like that like it feels just with better graphics like everything just feels very small scale and not in a good way uh i'm cool with the smaller city and all that i'm i welcome it because the games have been is too the long. world cool at least like no I've I've heard people it's say baghdad's no. nice no it's pretty to look at but there's nothing going on in it and there's only two enemy types by the way there's a regular guard and a heavy guard <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> and the difference between them is one takes more damage than the other that's it no bow and arrow guy uh yeah there's the bow and arrow guy okay but that's what i mean like there's just like a regular guard and then a heavy there's no special enemy that you're going to be taking on is what i'm saying yeah okay. it's a bit of a disappointment um like i said that's it's like a, it's like, it, this should be a game pass game it's like six i still know. gotta play it oh why you should be soft for the code oh uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy that's crazy that's crazy so that's Assassin's Creed mirage let's move on to the um news side of the podcast since the last podcast titanfall 3 has been teased in a multitude of different ways i know ethos is excited the first reason people think titanfall 3 is coming back is for some reason out of nowhere so for those of you unaware titanfall 1 and 2 has been in an abysmal state on pc um hackers have destroyed it out of nowhere um what's the name the developers respawn decided to fix it and not only did they fix it but they've been adding new game modes and messages inside of the game and people in the community are like it's having a resurgence right now like 20 30 thousand people again. online yeah again, yeah, again. again. Right. people, again. people, people are like why is respawn fixing the game all of a sudden and then this trailer leaked online let me see and oh, people are trying oh, to figure oh, it or not people are trying to figure out whether or not it's real basically it's a teaser trailer and it says worldwide reveal october 27th now the day in which we're recording is october 14th so we'll know if this trailer is real or not the next podcast um but yeah there's this trailer people are trying to figure out where this came from is this real oh, or not shit, this is real I don't, I don't think it's real either it doesn't um, look real i don't think it's real either but it was on twitter i looked it up it got taken down off of twitter i could only find it on tiktok shorts or you just got to take it off of twitter yeah like actually a copyright strike like i don't know if it was off? a copy i couldn't find the, the original link that i had uh it got deleted mm. I don't know. This looks this looks sus. They've been dropping a lot more Titanfall content inside of Apex. Apex is dying. There's really Good. no there's really no major shooter on the market right now. EA doesn't really have anything going right now. So people are thinking maybe this is the time. And you know they say third time's a charm. By the time, by the, by the time was the charm. They by, made a good game. By the third time or not, by the third time you hit the pussy, you know whether or not you know you're gonna you like, you, you go marry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Somebody, uh, somebody said respawn doing all this, and, and they're gonna hype y'all up for the 27th or the 31st because those are two days. Bro. So they're gonna hype y'all up just to get another octane skin. Dog, <laughs> I'm telling you, if it's an Apex <laughs> limited time mode, bro, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be crying, man. Uh, I'll be done with them. I'm man. not gonna hold my breath but i feel like if this news is true it's gonna set the internet on fire bro and i and if it is true you guys better fucking it is this game. it is interesting because i was playing typhoon when it started to resurge i was playing it i that it is true somebody updated the playlist mode and in the playlist there's a quote to 300 
in it. I forgot yeah. the quote was. It was something about like our like something about the arrows. Like I think it was about the arrows. Our arrows will blacken the skies or something like that. Uh, dark so they the sky. say your in in the fall reference to say your rockets will blow out the sun. Will blow out the sun. Yeah. Um. And so I don't know what that means. I don't know because if it's 300, three Titanfall three, or if it's maybe you know, you know maybe it's like you know the the last bit of de- like maybe there's some rogue developer over at Respawn that's like w- there's a joke in the Respawn community that the janitor is the one who's updating it like he's <laughs> he's a big fan so he got hired and he just sneaks into the server room and he makes patch and patches and he just quietly like updates the game and then he ships it before like leadership knows what's going on and then just like who updated titanfall and there everyone's like i don't know and it's like well it's too late for us to roll it back we might as well just let it happen um i, I i'm gonna be honest with you i'm coping i'm i got i'm full on oh. on hopium so yeah another reason you know. people think that maybe they're teasing titanfall 3 is because apparently i don't know if it was titanfall 2 they found in some game code there was like four codes and three of them translated to the release date of Titanfall One, Two, and Apex. So people are like, "What's that fourth code for?" Basically, is that like a like a re- another like release date? Yeah, I don't know, man. I'm I'm coping. I'm I'm straight up coping. I would love I would love nothing more than to wake up later this month and people spamming my Twitter like they did with Mass Effect and telling me that there's a new Titanfall game coming. I would love that, but I I don't know. I just feel like Respawn had more than ample amount of time to at least like tease us or do something and they just keep doing Apex stuff and I feel like if this is just a troll just for new Apex content I'm just gonna be I'm gonna be done I'll just be tired man I can't keep doing this let's say this is real why would they go through the means of these cryptic messages and like reviving Titanfall 2 to do it do you think it's because people just like are so excited that they're gonna data mine whatever they can anyways because oh, pretty much everything it. Every time something comes out in APEC, they just data mining. They're, they're, they're updating. If it is true, the reason I think they're updating uh, Titanfall 2 with new game modes as well as like fixing the hackers and stuff is in order. This game has been dormant. So in order to generate some actual hype, I, they wanted you know. to first fix the old game because you need your core fan base. And if they announce Titanfall 3 and then the core fan base is like well you guys abandoned too so you know we're it's kind of a yellow flag we're gonna see i think they were trying to get in the good graces of like gamers like oh nobody can complain yeah. about two so they're gonna get hyped about three and the fan base has been split right now because a lot of them moved on to using north star client to play titanfall because of all the hackers and that was like literally a, like a community ran like client that actually created brand new game modes and stuff and was adding like skins and stuff to the game Whoa. um yeah, yeah, it was like a North Star client because when the hackers basically made it where they DOS the servers when it's possible to connect, community came together and created a custom client that could still hook into Titanfall and they were able to modify. They basically were able to mod the game. So they added like a, a bunch of like Call of Duty game modes to the game. They added uh, a bunch of skins. Like it, it was a lot. Like they, they were doing a lot to the game. And then a couple months, this was like a couple months ago. And now they have this, now that the OG's back, now like the thing was like you had to go through a little bit of loops in order to get North Star working. Um, now that the regular one's working, people don't need to do that. So now they just log into time. Home. I was like, oh, my God, it works. So, I mean, again, I guess the hope I have is like someone updated Titanfall 2. Like that was it felt intentional. It had to be somebody at Respawn to do this. Now, do they just do it just because they had some free time? And they're just like, oh, I'll just update the game. Very possible. Could it be that? Yeah. What you're saying, like maybe they're about to announce the third game and they want to make sure the second game is like in solid, you know, whatever it is condition. Yeah. Maybe it's going to be what we talked about a year ago. Where we said, what if they found a way to like connect Apex and Titanfall 2 together? So that like you could boot up Apex and then you could get both communities to both intertwine with each other to like keep the player base happy. May that would be a best case scenario. Maybe that's what they're doing. That's why they're fixing two. So and then maybe or, they have the two games synergize. I don't know. Or this is all just too. a fucking cruel joke. Here's another thing too. Maybe also they're updating it because when they announce three, they know in the back of their head because the game is only three to five dollars on average on Steam. People it's, will it's, buy it. People are gonna buy two to see what the hype is about. And yeah. they want to make sure the game works beforehand. Because at this point, I feel like, though, I feel like Titanfall 2 is a cult classic. And that's why I feel like this is like this type of like marketing makes sense because it is a cult game. And I feel like a lot of fans are that obsessive about they it. They know they're going to dig for that stuff. Yeah, they're going to dig for this stuff. They, they care about this sort of thing. And they're, they're looking for anything they can. Um, and I wonder if that plays into the role of like how they're going to market three um kind of like what you said there's a big gap right now really like the 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 biggest shooters right now are all tactical based it's like i'd argue the big shooters right now is uh valorant 
CSGO 2 just came out, so I guess CSGO and um, Siege or Call of Duty, one of those two. I think it's either you alternate one of those two guys. I think that's right now the, the top, but they're old. They're all old. Like, they've all been out for a couple of years. I feel like Titanfall, there's no... Halo was supposed to take it, but there's no... There's nothing exciting FPS right, right now. now. Yeah, there's no exciting FPS right now, and I feel like this is the perfect time for Titanfall to show up and be like, hey, remember that game that was extremely good that you guys, like, that got screwed over really bad? Hey, here's, like the final vision of where we think it can go. And I think that could, they can nail it, so. All right. We'll see. Or we're coping. We're all just coping. We'll see. We don't know. We will see next podcast if that shit was true. Yeah, or, or it was a fucking joke, yeah. What we do know for sure is, is that Microsoft officially acquired Activision, as JG uh, mentioned it earlier. And I think the funny thing about this is the day, because this happened like a couple of days ago, literally like an hour after the announcement, they dropped a trailer. A minute. Yeah, like <laughs> Eight the minutes minute. after. They dropped a montage. So you know they had this video already. They was feeling <laughs> real confident. Um, the war's finally over. Uh, Microsoft finally got their second Infinity Stone and Activision Blizzard. What does this mean for the gaming industry, Ethos? Uh, it means a couple things. Uh, one, it means maybe for once we're not going to spend seventy dollars every year for a Call of Duty game. Thank God. I, th I think for consumers, it's very positive. I think when it comes to the industry, it's more of a it's more of a mixed bag. For all we know, because of you know, there's a lot of the layoffs layoffs going on right now. I hope what doesn't happen is when they start to take all these studios, then they start cutting jobs because they're like, okay, we don't need all this from Activision now in order for us to with our current resources. Um, I do hope. This is my hope. I hope Microsoft doesn't stick Blizzard and Activision like what they've been doing or their studios and they haven't put in all those studios that were working on Call of Duty every year. I hope they give them time to breathe. I hope they give them a break from Call of Duty, let them either make new games that they wanted to. There's maybe. a rumor Spyro 4 is getting announced soon. Um yeah, like like bring back uh there's also apparently Guitar Hero is being talked about. That's bringing all, that I saw back. that rumor, yeah. Yeah, that's another thing. Apparently, Bobby Kotick, uh, I've heard he's going to be on the way out by the end of this year. That's what I've heard. If that's true, and, and then Phil takes over, I think Guitar Hero would be a perfect, cool, like, retro way to get people back into it and incorporate within Xbox, within his merchandising and stuff like that. That could be a big dub, because um, a lot of big fans were big of fans of, like, Guitar Hero, DJ Hero. Um, and maybe bring it into, like, a new modern age would be really cool with new songs. Um a lot of games are going to end up on the Game Pass. I think this is going to definitely like, like probably destroy our the total of Game Pass users. I think we're going to see a big influx now that Call of Duty is going to be on it. I think that's just immediately going to boost the the sales of Game Pass. Um, and my hope is, like I said, I just really want another studio to get a crack at those IPs. Like I wouldn't mind another studio trying to make a call, like a spinoff of Call of Duty to try something different. Like I, I've always said this, I'm tired of Call of Duty trying the same type of shit. I would love them to try to make a, something like a, a, a fantasy Call of Duty or a uh, um, a like steampunk Call of Duty. Something that's different, that, that, that doesn't fit into that standard military, modern day type of shooter that they've been doing for the past couple of years. Just something to mix it up because now that you got the resources and I'd love to see those studios also make some new IPs or bring back, like what you said, some dormant IPs. They can bring back Tony Hawk now um, with Spyro. Uh, uh, they, now they have, they Crash is now apparently Xbox now. Um, Sekiro is apparently, I guess now. Wait, Activision Mark's published it. Yeah, Question we Mark is yeah, owned Yeah, they did now. publish it. We still don't know for sure. Yeah, though. so if, we don't know what that. Gave them that yeah, idea. if if From had gave Activision the rights, and that means now Microsoft owns Sekiro, so... Maybe they make Sekiro too. I don't know. There's a lot of like I don't knows right now. There's a lot of question marks, but I'm hoping there's going to be more positive than negatives. I hope a lot of people. I hope people don't lose their jobs. That's what I hope. At um, bare yeah. minimum, the W to me is this means that Call of Duty more than likely starting next year is about to become a pseudo free to play game. Play if game it's on, if yeah. it's on if it's on Game Pass. I will not cancel my Game Pass membership if I know. I I'm will gonna, keep it forever. At, at bare minimum, I know I'm getting Call of Duty every year on top yep. of Liza P2, Starfield DLC, or whatever new games are also coming. Flintlock, like there's constantly new games. Yeah, I'm not going to cancel my Game Pass because I know at bare minimum I'm going to get Call of Duty for free and I, I can stop complaining about it and all the other value. So I think that's that's the bare minimum cool thing about it. How you feeling about this, Jay? I mean, and I'm just glad it's finally done. I'm glad it's finally done. For all the people you already mentioned, Bobby Kotek, I mean, you already know we were waiting on this to finally go through. Now Bobby Kotek can finally take his uh, $400 million or whoever else is rumored and, and finally be done. 
Uh, like I said, I don't know how many people are still upset with him because it seemed like the entire world forgot after yeah. the initial controversy. Um, we're going to hope that everybody at Activision, Blizzard, um, that there's no more controversy within the the various workplaces now that they're going to be under uh, the Microsoft banner. Um, I and like like you all say, I just I really hope that we can finally get to these other titles that have been under the Activision banner because like I said it's been Prototype. pretty much like a one Grab trick a pony. Yeah, that's another one. Yeah, it's been a one trick pony. We see Call of Duty every single year. They're throwing all this freaking DLC at us. We're we're into. I, I don't even know how they got through six seasons in Warzone. That's crazy. Six it's seasons in, in in a year before the new one came out. It's ridiculous. It's just it's too much. We need to be able to take a break and uh, and see what else that you can do with these other titles. So hopefully, again, under the under the Microsoft banner and the leadership, we can get to some other IPs. I would like to see some fresh IPs as well. Like you're talking about these old ones, I want to see some fresh IPs. Um, now that they're under the banner, like show us some new stuff and see what happened. But I mean, it's what it is. I'm just glad it's finally done because I was tired of talking about it, to be honest. Yeah, and now we can stop having these conversations. Now the big thing is going to be now people are going to start talking about what's going to be exclusive on Xbox, what's going to still be on PlayStation. I, that now we just got to go up that conversation all over again, which is going to be irritating. But yeah, because I, I Microsoft was, you know, I, I think that they were gracious with Call of Duty and still, yeah. you know, letting Sony and uh, and Nintendo have it on their platform. But these other ones, eh, yeah, 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 might, yeah, that, yeah. You, you might, you might as well kiss them goodbye, buddy. Yeah um what's the name and the cool thing the interesting thing that came out of this whole acquisition is right before the acquisition that actually happened some documents leaked that there was, was a crazy there's a there was a whole ftc investigation on microsoft and um activision and some documents leaked and in those documents we found out plans microsoft has for the future and this is some interesting stuff including games and act so acquisitions in this document it was leaked Microsoft would like to acquire Warner Bros, Valve, and Nintendo. Warner Bros, I can see, but can see Nintendo and Valve, especially Nintendo, yeah. Nintendo will commit Man. seppuku before they <laughs> fucking give up Mario to Microsoft. Bro. I cannot, Mario. I cannot you see should, that. Mario <laughs> wearing like green and white and stuff is his, his trousers. Like, so. I get it. You know, y'all been buddy buddy because it's pretty much been y'all against Sony, but. For y'all to acquire them, man, that's ooh, that's like almost a zero percent chance in my book. Nintendo is a national treasure, a sense of pride for Japan. They're not giving that shit up, bro. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, Valve also seems kind of crazy here too. Yeah, I don't believe that one. Like, yeah, what do they even do no. with that? Yeah, because I remember Siggy and me were talking about the potential of like Sony. Because I remember Siggy was saying if Sony really wanted to try to fight back, they would try to go for Valve. Because so Siggy was saying that financially it was kind of doable, but it was still going to be kind of hurting Sony's pockets. But Microsoft, I mean, they had the money; they could have gone for Valve. But I feel like Valve doesn't make. I mean, not, Valve doesn't. I wouldn't say Valve doesn't make sense, but I would say Valve kind of like just cuts into a pie that microsoft already owns and it just removes a segment of that pie and just fully like puts it all into one um yeah i I just don't see valve as really uh like kind of like i was like oh if it happens it happens but i don't really feel like it's something you really have to like you go you actually like fight over and i don't think that gabe would ever sell it to microsoft unless he died and somebody else would make the sale yeah and then there's there's a timeline of games coming in the near future including an indiana jones game an oblivion remaster elder scrolls expansion starfield dlc it's about Um, really matters dishonored 3 is confirmed uh, fallout 3 remaster ghostwire 2 tokyo 2 but yeah dishonored 3 is probably the big one Dishonored 3 yeah that's the big one everybody's been asking for yeah we've been waiting a long since what 2017 2018 was the last when 2 came out i think that long it's been a long time. Two came out a long time ago. Take, uh, listen, I just need Arcane to take their time with it, especially after that. What was that vampire they did, uh, dog shit they put out? Oh, um, Redfall. Oh yeah, Redfall. Especially after yeah. Redfall, take your time, Arcane. You know, please. Hey, Two came out in 2016. 16. Six. Failure can really fuck with your confidence, so I need Ooh. y'all to come in on some alpha Ooh. shit. For it's been three. seven years, bro. Seven oh years. Oh my god, seven long years. Forget, oh um, my god. Also, yeah, oh, come out next year. So, yeah. Wow, it's revealed. Uh, I mean, which is shouldn't be a shocker, but Elder Scrolls Six will be exclusive to Xbox and PC. So PlayStation fans, uh, yeah, 
Well, just all the like Bethesda Starfield. Games. Yeah, hey, so that was You're not going to see Fallout that. anymore. You're not going to see Elder Scrolls. Yeah, we might as well kiss those goodbye. What else are the Sony ponies going to complain about? You think they're going to complain about that one too? I mean, Cyber yeah. Army, uh, Starfield was a big one, but I don't know if they're going to. I don't know how many other games that they're going no, to No, they're about. just coping right now. They're convinced that... <laughs> I don't know where this rumor... I, this rumor already has been debunked, but they, they swear up and down that Sony's going to buy CD Projekt Red, which I doesn't seem... It doesn't make sense to me, but... I don't Do know. Do Sony niggas even play Witcher? Like, I don't know. They played Cyberpunk, but um, the sales of Cyberpunk was 60... Mostly... I would imagine it's a, more of a PC eight? game. It is 68 of the people that bought Cyberpunk were all on PC. So a vast majority of Cyberpunk players were on, were on PC. And then after that, then it was PlayStation took out like the last bit of that. And then Xbox was the, lo- the lowest Man. with uh, Ouya or not Ouya. Ooh, yeah. Stadia was the <laughs> smallest yeah, one. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Man, them Sony pony niggas, man. When they ain't watching cutscenes of Final Fantasy 16, they in Twitter spaces, bro. They ain't to play yeah, no games. Pretty much. <laughs> What do you what do you think of this new Xbox though? You see this new this new digital one? redesign. Oh, they one? joined the, like the trash yeah. can. It looks yeah. like the, uh, the so Sony like the shrunk their air filter. And, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, air filter. Yeah. So Sony shrunk their PS5, and it looks like Xbox is making a trash can now instead of a fridge. So hey, it's not more powerful. It's just like just slimmer hardware and like better like um, performance. It's the same and, like, power, cooling. right? Yeah, yeah it's, it's just, just performance cool on cooling. Stuff. I'm not buying that. Uh, Faster Wi-Fi, reduced power. Yeah, I don't feel like I need this. I don't use Wi-Fi on my console. I can yeah, see how this might Wi-Fi be good for new people. Man. Just I'm using Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi seven in that joint, man. Why, why are you gonna still put Wi-Fi six E? Put Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi seven. Yeah. Put an Ethernet um, cable in your fucking uh, console. That y'all be ruining my experience, bro. There's an Ethernet, Ethernet cable. Cord. Yeah, so, no, I'm no, I'm saying motherfuckers need I'm to stop my, using Wi-Fi. I'm, I'm looking why, at my Xbox why? right now, like I think there's one. No, I'm <laughs> saying why is Wi-Fi a selling point? Stop using that shit. Put a fucking Ethernet cable in your. Most people still don't use, e- bro. That's why 2K is so ass ass at the time. Tbh, here's the here's the truth, okay. All across America, people have homes, okay? And in these homes, there's only certain places they can ask JG Drill how the wiring is done. <laughs> Drill a hole. It's not, it's not that not, easy. JG can tell lie, you, it's bro. not people that not easy. Gonna people yeah. are not going to pay for that. People, people will like, they're if, not if, gonna they're pay that really money. Desperate, if they're really desperate, they, they're going to get like a 100 foot Ethernet cord. Ethernet cable, and they will, yeah. yeah they'll, yep. <laughs> when I was at my old place. place I, I used to do that. Yeah. I had a 50 foot cord, yeah. When I was at my old place, uh, the Ethernet was in the, I was in the master bedroom. So it was from there. So <laughs> the router was in my room and we bought this big ass uh, 50 foot Ethernet cable to go from like underneath my door into like the middle of the upstairs and then had a router there that then would disperse to the other rooms underneath their like, uh, yeah. their doors. Uh, yeah, when it comes to was, home planning, I will yeah. be thinking about that. I, I had a conversation about Definitely that about that one time you, houses yeah like, i was surprised how many i remember i was talking about apartment hunting i was surprised how many people didn't ask about internet like, they need it, to it, yes. that's literally that's literally the first question i asked when i was a what I is the internet yes. who's your internet provider what are my yeah. what are my uh, what are my options that's here? the do first I thing i one google option or do i have do i yeah people yeah, be getting caught up oh this is a nice mm-hmm. apartment be on some doo-doo ass internet bro. and then it'd be yeah you'd be screwed and you're stuck there for, for 12 months with shitty internet and then some places in la they just lie like my first apartment but you know that's crazy i still got that Go ahead and air him up, bro. Oh yeah, the infamous <laughs> screenshot. Yo, that I that ass wanted to cry. That internet was so bad, bro. I was panicking. I was like, nah. Didn't they say it was like? Internet. Didn't they promise you it was like? Yes, it's high speed gigabyte internet. Is that what they yeah, said? In yeah, the it was high speed. It was it was listed. It was listed on the website. They had high speed internet. I went to the office. I asked them. I said, what are the speeds offered here? They said you can get at least five hundred up, five hundred down. I was like, it's not gigabit, but I was like, that's more than good enough. I was like, I can work with that. I get in there. The apartment that I had, it was the one apartment in the building where the wiring was still old copper wiring, so it oh, couldn't get no. the fiber or whatever. Um, and the thing is, they didn't apparently they didn't know. So, uh, in, in California, if you break lease early, uh, you have to pay like a thousand dollar fine or something. They didn't make me pay it because they knew they knew they, they fucked up, up. Basically, yeah, they just let me go. That's how I ended up getting another uh, apartment. Um, with uh, with uh, that previous apartment, was it like all the tenants were on the same? Everybody system? had high speed internet, but me. Well, no, no. I'm saying, I'm saying, like, like if they all had Wi-Fi, was everybody using the exact same, like, actual, like, Wi-Fi connection, or was it like they're all separate? I don't know. I just know that they had like, and they had a bunch of apartment complexes, and like to the left, they had like street level apartments, which is one of them I was on. But they also uh, rented them out to people as, um, like, studios that you can work out of. So like, uh, it was a big ass, like, fifteen hundred foot like loft that, like, the right next to me was a uh, nail salon. So like right. it could it could have been like um a business basically, but they didn't realize that the 
I guess the good internet reached to that that one. It was a really nice apartment. I was really upset I couldn't keep it, but Dude. I was like, yeah, I gotta go. So then that's how I ended up in that shoebox for a year with the it was like six hundred square feet. Was, At least you got fast internet. <laughs> but I, I had fast internet. I had it. No. <laughs> Shoebox for fast internet. I'll take it. <laughs> you know it, baby. Got to get my job done. Um, what's the name? Oh, last piece of Xbox news. Xbox credit card was announced. Who was ready to get ripped off? Uh, Microsoft has partnered up with MasterCard to create the Gamer Xbox uh, credit card. Uh, it has different rewards. You can uh, earn points on your Xbox credit card for your purchases, uh, discounts on Netflix, as well as like you get points towards spending in the Microsoft store. Um, and that's about it. Uh, I think the APR on it's like a thousand percent or some shit like that. Uh, you guys copping that Xbox credit card? I'm good. You gotta be a super Microsoft fan <laughs> to do this, because there are there are way better cars. Like if you want a credit card, like please, like the the worst that you could do is like, hey, if you go to Target all the time, get a credit card with them. Please don't get an Xbox credit card. Like what the hell? What are you doing? What are you thinking? Like yeah, you, you're really not gonna spend that much, or I hope you're not gonna spend that much. That oh my god, I'm, I get to get a free game once I get a certain amount of points. You're gonna get a ridiculous amount of points to even get a free game. Come on now. I read that article. I was like, who is this card for? All the rewards are mainly locked behind the Microsoft store. I'm like, just get a regular Capital One credit card so then it gives you cash back and you can spend it anywhere. Why exactly. would you limit yourself to this shit, bro? Exactly. I'm like, bro, this is, it's really predatory at the end of the day once you really think about it. Like, why why would anybody get there? This doesn't appeal to anybody or it shouldn't appeal to anybody. Still not as bad as the uh, the GameStop credit card, but it might be a second place, the Xbox credit card. Uh, oh, my God. Don't get me started. It had like a 30% APR. What's the APR? Yeah, what's the it, APR? It, was, it, was, it like? was high. I remember when I saw that shit, I was like, yo, they are really preying on children, bro. That shit was a straight ripoff. And then also, yeah. how does GameStop afford to even run a credit business? They barely stay in the float. What the fuck is that? That's I why mean, they're doing a credit business. That shit is <laughs> not insured. Me. They do not hold your 200000 Nope. That shit collapsed tomorrow um moving on to sony news uh sony announced the playstation 5 slim finally we've been hearing rumors about it for the longest as well as a pro still you know, we haven't heard anything about a pro but the slim is real and um it, it by default it'll be digital uh but you can not, no longer there will be a disc drive in it you could buy the disc drive the the blu-ray disc drive uh as a bonus i think it was like 80 bucks from what i read uh and also fun fact this new slim model without the disc drive will be 50 dollars more now this only pertains to america but you know that is a large portion of their base uh really it was kind of quiet the twitter space is really quiet on this one uh from the sony ponies uh charging more for less how are we feeling about this playstation 5 slim jay He's just excited. He said he's going to cop it immediately. Did he really? <laughs> no, nah, he was talking about the pro, actually. But I'm like, bro. <laughs> Say, what? Like, Say, why? I'm like, I'm like, first of all, they haven't announced the pro yet. And second of all, I was like, yeah. I was like, you still got that console mindset. Please don't. Like, well, I'm sorry. Really no what do you need a pro, pro for? What's, what is the pro going to do? I swear, Ace Upscaled like, 8K. Not... What, yeah, like, exactly. what, what thing are they going to add that the layman's going to be excited for for a pro version? It doesn't I mean, matter. That's what he said. Still running the base. 120 yeah. FPS? Oh, by the way, by the way um the the mount at the bottom it doesn't come with it anymore either you got to buy that too no the, the yeah, standing mount they, 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 nickel and, they nickel and dime you for all these accessories and it costs 50 bucks more did it, so did it psn that? go up in price too yeah didn't they, they recently boost yeah like, they did and then like ten dollars like, or something the highest one is like 40 bucks but yeah like depends on the uh the level That's that you crazy, got bro That's yeah crazy. nah nah i mean it, it's funny though because we all knew this was coming sony and nintendo stick to their guns they stick to their same model so we all know that as soon as uh, a switcher or whatever is going to come out then they're going to come out with a million different versions of that same thing with sony uh, the, the slim is first and then they're going to come out with the pro before they get ready to come out with the ps6 that they end up doing that or whatever the next version is going to be called so get all it's those whatever suckers. that at, at this point like i said there there should be no shortage of ps5s around there so if you just truly want to get this and pay 50 bucks more go for it because it's not it's not like the ps5 is taking up a ton of room oh, wait, it's 450 or entertainment center yeah it's 450 now of- yeah it's 450 instead of 400 so you could go get the og one the bigger one for you'll get you'll get the disc drive <laughs> and it so costs wait, so, you so you're you paying more 500 so. so. you're this paying not more paying attention. yes you're paying for more no, for no, less no, I, I get that i'm just making sure i'm understanding this so it's not like the disc drive is with it or is no it they took it, it out no. you're paying more for less 
No, that can't be. No, hold on. That doesn't make sense. And you have to pay for the stand now, too. No, okay, hold on. Hold on. So is can, there a bigger hard drive? Like, I believe it's a one no, terrobyte now, I no. believe. Oh, it's not? Oh, yeah. No, it is. Yeah, okay. It, it, the hard drive is bigger, but still, it's only right. one It's already terabyte. a one terabyte. It's always been one terabyte. No, it's 500 gigs. Yeah, it was. It was it no, wasn't. it's not. No, it wasn't. It wasn't, guess, it wasn't one terabyte. It was no. one terabyte. I got yeah. four with 500 gigs. No, because I remember when I booted my shit. It's like it's like 800. It's like 800. I remember when I booted up and had like no 600 way. on. Are you sure it's a one terabyte? Okay, well, it has to be one terabyte. All, all these games wrong. being 100 gigs, ain't no way it's 500 terabyte. That that was the old one. The PS4 was 500 gigs. This one is a terabyte. I'm pretty sure. Out of the That's way. Ridiculous. That is. That it is doesn't, crazy. It doesn't yeah. surprise me they removed the disc drive because I just read an article yesterday that Best Buy will no longer be carrying um, DVDs and Blu-rays. So like, it's a thing. Like, you know, people stream, they download games. It's just kind of like the future. It doesn't surprise me. It just surprised me that they're charging more when the system is smaller. They're not updating the specs. I can understand if it was a more powerful system, but they're not updating the specs. So why does it cost more? Uh, money. Yeah, this one doesn't make sense at all. It's like money could have kept it the same price, but so, yeah, they know you're gonna buy it. That's money, why. exactly. But like I said, just get a regular PS5. I don't think this really appeals to anybody, even the people that don't have one yet. Just just go and get one. Like the Spider Man button is freaking still out there. Go go get that. Yeah, you know, this is gonna make it sound like Xbox shows. But do you remember? You remember when Xbox came up? Came out genius, brilliant fucking idea where they came out with the Xbox X, the, the S, the smaller one yeah. from the 360. Remember they had that black one that was smaller. And it was like uh, it actually shrunk it, and they, the hard drive was internal. And then they came out with the arcade, which was like we take out the Straight hard digital. drive, but yeah, but oh was, yeah, I remember, remember that. that? Yeah, it yeah. was like a four gigabyte yeah. internal, but it was cheaper, so it got more people to buy this console. I don't understand how doing the reverse is gonna be good. I don't know. That doesn't make sense to me. I don't know. Maybe the Sony people will have a better grasp of the of the market than I do. So. Well, the icing well, on the cake is it's being reported Sony also got hacked. So. Um, Sony's it's current. a bad month for blank <laughs> again i swear we've reported this story like five times again uh there's a ransomware group a hacker group that claims they've breached all of sony's defenses um and they're threatening to sell all of our data on the dark web so there's it hasn't been confirmed or not because sony is investigating to see if this threat is real but I brought this up just on the podcast because if you own a PlayStation, whether it's a four or a f- four, a five, uh, log in and just change your info uh, just to be safe because we don't know if this shit is real because Sony's getting threatened right now. And from what history tells us, I'm going to say 80 percent chance they probably did get hacked because they're they're notoriously Sony's uh, defenses fucking suck. Their cyber security sucks. They've been hacked multiple times. You saw what happened with Lizard Squad. Um I was just about to mention that. I was like, damn, bro. We need a Lizard Squad documentary, boy. They're yeah, crazy. Yeah. Hey, Sony, bro. Like, damn. Like, why they keep attacking y'all? Like, what's what's really going on with the Easy ranks? target, probably. Yeah, they be like, I well, they got hit it, they got hit once. Like, we can just we can just hit them. Like, they're like that goofy meme. Oh, I'll do it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do it again. Um, <laughs> and after that, that bad PS5 slim and the Sony being hacked news, we have a slew of negative news we're gonna have to go through here. So bear with us i swear sorry. we're not trying to be negative it's just <laughs> yeah, a lot. um the next negative story we got for you is nvidia uh, creator of what i would say is probably the most popular gpu out right now uh the feds did a sweep on them uh in france they hit up their french headquarters the uh, the french uh feds they did a sweep and apparently they're being accused of tampering with competition um mm. and i was saying i i don't know how it works in france but out here in america in America, the feds have a 98% uh, win percentage in uh, federal court. So if they come after you, it's because usually they have some very good evidence against you and they're confident they're going to clap you. I don't know if that's how it is in France, but I'm just going to take a wild guess. It might be. I'm trying to figure out what the fuck did NVIDIA do to where the what feds did, y'all did, do? <laughs> the face did a sweep What did they ass. do to make them niggas that <laughs> mad? <laughs> uh, and the only thing I was talking about, I was like, the only thing I could think of is because they said they're, they're being accused of tampering with um, competition. Antitrust. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm thinking maybe they're fucking with AMD's like 
chip, to be. chip shipments yeah. or something like that, like to try to slow down the competition, which would be mm. fucking wild. But I was corporate trying to espionage, say, maybe. Mm. Maybe they're maybe they have like agents in AMD that are purposely like screwing their tech to make sure it's not as fast as Nvidia's. Maybe mm. I don't know. Maybe they bought out some trade secrets from AMD or stole some. Who knows? There's yeah. a lot of possibilities. And they just uh, it's rumors that the five thousand series should be coming soon. Like this is a very interesting. They just dropped the four. Jesus freaking. Christ. And this is a story I feel like a lot of people didn't comment on uh, or like post. I only saw it like on IGN, but this is a story I think we, everybody got to keep their eyes on uh, to see how this plays out because like this could fuck over the company in the long run. What you think, Jay? Yeah, I mean, this is it's a lot to uh, to take in here, especially with you know limited information. So like, geez, um, you know, like you all mentioned, the only other like real competitor that they have, what the right competitor is, AMD's. So this, I mean maybe they have some like crazy ai technology now that they're somehow using that to come out to amd for whatever they have because amd has been um you know slowly gaining on them in the in the computing market and uh and gpu market but mostly with uh with chips because nvidia even though they make chips they're not they're not in direct competition with amd in that aspect it's, it's intel with that but uh but nvidia also make chips so I don't know maybe they're trying to like get more leverage in the chip market too and they found something uh either with intel or amd in that aspect not even gpu but cpus that uh that you know it's, it's messing with either of those companies so uh i mean i'll try to stay up to date on this one because I'm, I'm actually very curious you know what they possibly could have done because this is kind of crazy Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. do i have arnold up in your house in the video this is crazy mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um other bad news naughty dog Lord. is in some hot water uh recently they laid off 25 employees and it's being reported that the last of us multiplayer game that they've been hyping up is on very thin ice meaning it can be canceled at any moment. And apparently to add insult to injury, these developers that were laid off a part of the downsizing of the studio, it was being reported that they were told by Naughty Dog to keep this shit quiet. Shut the fuck up, basically. Um, Y'all think we're going to see the light of day on this game? How we feeling about this? What's going on with Naughty Dog, man? It's my like dad, man. man. Ethos never going to give us a chance to call anybody Nurse Joy again, man. <laughs> My disappointment is immeasurable and my day has been ruined. <laughs> this is the one thing I, I said multiple times when I was like with Last of Us 2 and stuff. I, was, I always said when I played uh, the first game, I said I actually enjoyed the multiplayer more. And I thought the multiplayer was really cool. And to hear that we're never going to see a vision of the second one with the enhancements of what the second game brought is it's it's disappointing to say the least. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you, bro. This is just my take. I don't know what the fuck they're doing over there at Naughty Dog. I really don't understand it. They won't give us Jack 4. They keep remastering old games. Apparently, uh, it's been confirmed that Last of Us 2 is getting remastered. I don't know what they're nah, doing. Bro. Yes, no. that was confirmed. No. Yes, they have. We have a link. Remastered Revenge is bad. I, yeah, saw, we I, saw have a, right. I saw that rumor. I yeah. saw it. We have a confirmed employee on their LinkedIn saying that they were outsourcing for Last of Us 2 remastered on their LinkedIn resume. I think that's Crap, pretty bro. safe to say that's it's real. Why they're doing this, I don't know. Why is this even needed? I don't know. They already patched the game. It runs fine on PS5. It hits sexy. Like what? What else do they need to do? They already they they updated the first game so that the graphics would be match the second game, so people could like go from one to two and it would look good. What the fuck does the second game need that requires it to Live be remastered? Long again? enough to become the villain. You know what it is, bro. What, 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 what could they do? What could they do to the game? They're what, working. What could they do? They're working on season two of the HBO show and what okay. would go great with the what, launch what of the show what are they going to change with the, the game owner. they did it with they what it's not about changing it it's just about getting it out there so they can promo it with the show okay, okay. Well, hold on, hold on, okay. Sells. no tbh what the f how are you gonna okay if i was gonna sell that to you how the fuck am i gonna market that to you it's what, not, what am i supposed to say it's not for us three it's for the people watching the show 
But how do I market that? Well, you already, okay, so you remastered the first game and you retitled it Last of Us Part 1 so that it would flow well with you're, Last of Us 2 Part 2. Me. What the fuck are you going to name the second one? You're Last of Us Part 2 Remastered? You're you're under the guise that the people that watch the show watch read IGN and GameSpot, bro. I don't know fuck if they don't. That's confusing to them. No, my girl had no clue what the fuck The Last of Us was. We watched the show together. She's like, I want to play the game now. That's who it's for. That's I get crazy, that. bro. But how do you explain that, that to bad. a person that's like, I want to play Last of Us 2 now, us, and you're going to explain? Bro, it's not for us. I'm Dog, telling it you. Make sense. What the, I know it doesn't it make sense, sense, but I saw it, I saw it firsthand because she was she plays Call of Duty. She was like, I think I want to play this type of game now. I'm like, this shit came nah, out you twice don't. already. It's you not, I, can't, it, I can't understand I get this. I don't get it. It's not for us. It's annoying. I. Because we were Jack understand. 4, I understand. It's a, or no, how about this? This makes no sense. Make this a new makes no game. Sense. He give us Jack 4 or make a new game. I get the frustration. I'm with you. I'm just telling you I understand it because I've seen it firsthand. That shit works. It's but I, not I don't understand. Right, bro. Why right. can't someone just watch the second one and just go play part two? Why does it need to be remastered? I get it. I, I Why? Understand. Because the but PS5 is the money. new system and they might not know the last one came out on the PS4 and the PS3. Those people are not going to go look into all that info when it's right there on the five. It's about positioning yourself to win. That's all it is. It's I'm purely just, a money play. I'm just play. curious. I'm just going to check games. They probably won't even change much. But I'm just curious if I search Last of Us 2. If, okay, the only okay. excuse was if they said that Last of Us 2 was going to have the multiplayer with this remaster, or they, they were, they were, they were going to clean it up and then it was going to have a multiplayer with it, then I would have been like, okay, you got me, I'll get it. Mm -hmm. But now we don't even have that in there. So yeah. if you're not, so I'm gonna guess they're not gonna add new content to this game. I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess. Most likely no. So what? They're just gonna update the like. What do you do? You're gonna update the visuals. Just visuals, yes. That's well, how do you update? It, it, already, it already, it already looks good. It already that's looks really good. One, it's literally one, 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 one of the most beautiful games I've ever seen. It's literally one of the most beautiful graphical fidelity, like from a graphical fidelity standpoint. It's a beautiful game. What the fuck do you need to upgrade about Bro. it? People are people are stuck in their bubble. It's literally what T Bay said. People are stuck in their bubble. They don't know about this series at all. I, I swear to I'm God, I'm not bro. trying to defend this, bro. I'm not trying to defend it because I literally shit on everybody. Is it because of the four title? Is that is that it, JG? Is it is it just because if I search Last of Us Two, I just see the PS4 thing on the top of the it's box? About, is that it? They just want to put the five on the ease, box. It's about ease of access. There are literally oh, people yeah. out there having. I saw a TikTok because so I, I talked about it. I saw so a TikTok of this stupid. woman. And she was like yelling. She's like, so I watched the Last of Us TV show. And she was like, why didn't you tell me that there's amazing stories in the Yeah, I saw games? that. Yeah. That was, that was that's, so that's who that the so remasters stupid. for. There you, are people bro. out there that don't play games, oh. Ethos. <laughs> I get this. But get this, bro. Here's a here's the other thing. Then you have the gamers who know about The Last of Us. Because unfortunately, I've and seen And they're going to buy I've it seen, too. I, yes, exactly. I've seen some of our people. You can get mad at those they, people. They, they, <laughs> did it. they did it with part one. They did it with part one remaster. They did it when it came on the PC. I'm like, bro. Justify that me? shit, and they yeah. justified it, and they're going to do it. Those again people I don't understand. Gets remastered. Those people I don't they're understand. Do it again, bro. To be fair, though, those people I don't understand. But to be fair, the other people, the the normies, like The Last of Us, is popular amongst the gaming community. But I don't think that game crossed over. That game is not Halo. It's not Mario. It's it's not a game that like mainstream masses know. Yeah, you know, and, right. that, and that's it's, who it's, it's on the darker for. side. Okay. It's on the darker side. I just like thought about Uncharted. this. Uncharted mm -hmm. was up there. It was more marketable because it was like you know Indiana Jones. It was all on, on that stuff. But Last of Us, I wouldn't even put Nathan Drake next to Mario or like Master I Chief. Wouldn't. Or I wouldn't. I wouldn't put Nathan Drake at that level. I'm just I'm, no. I'm just saying as far as PlayStation, he is, marketable, is, but for PlayStation, more, yeah, yeah. yeah, more no, yes, yeah, for for the PlayStation brand, he is their Master Chief. Like niggas know who Kirby and Donkey Kong is. Like those are iconic characters. But for Sony, I don't think Nathan is. The Sony, the Sony fan, they're you know they 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 like they they put him in higher regard. What if this remaster is actually for the PC? Like what if they're just hiding that? They're just they're just they're just internally calling it a remaster, but it's like basically the PC because they're probably gonna like. Push it, it for like again. higher fidelity and shit because it's, it's, it's going to go on there regardless. If the first one did, then the second one definitely will too. Either way, it's coming, and you just have to accept it. Naughty Dog lived long enough to become the villain. This is y'all great studio. This is the greatest studio in yeah. gaming, y'all. For I, real, I ain't gonna lie, man. This, this is this is the greatest studio in gaming. Sure, They've been making buddy. the same game for the last I guess, fifteen bro. years between Uncharted. And I guess the last it's of like us. I don't I don't get this I don't, I don't get this. I don't get why these developers and publishers get so tunnel vision like I get that you may have that banger series that makes you buku amount of dollars but 
I, I don't get how you just forget about what got you there in the first place. Like these other titles, I want to see them again. Just like you had this nostalgia effect with all of the people who grew up with these uh, iconic titles, bring them back or I think it's um, them. It's 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 poor decisions riddled in good intentions. And what I mean is like them scaling back, like the studio got bigger. It's not the same Naughty Dog from the PS2 era. The studio got bigger, which means the bills are higher. So like the heads up are probably looking at it like we got more mouths to feed. We don't want to let these people go. So what's safer, creating a new IP, putting a bunch of marketing behind it and hoping it sells well or reproducing they, something we know that they works just already. let people go and they're doing what you just said yeah, and I they're know, letting people go no, I'm, so, oh, I'm, just giving a different perspective. I'm just giving it well i think that has more to do with the economy right what's now it's just in bad shape but um, That's what I'm saying. what's the point but i i will say that like i i get the the, the perspective of playing defense because you're trying to preserve and make sure people can get fed the issue is i think they're playing too defensively like you at some point you got to come out that shell and take a risk to, to you didn't create the last of us playing it safe i think they're being too safe that's the fair argument to make right now it's it's unfortunate bro it's unfortunate and, and especially like because you wasted so many resources on trying to get the multiplayer, multiplayer. you, you didn't garbage. have it you didn't have it when the game came out and people already like well where the hell is the multiplayer like i i want to play factions where it's factions where it's factions and then like, oh well it's coming and we're you know we're trying to do this other thing over here and then you you immediately cancel that other thing over here but you're like all oh, factions still might be coming and now we're we're most likely not going to get it because you laid off people like it, i feel like it, it's whack like if, if you still want to go through this formula of still bringing out last of us 2 remaster and you're but you just, you just wasted yeah. all this money and you know just, uh, and just time to and people next, yeah and time and people i yeah, think it's, it's safe to I say they're like they're on the clock they need something to boom they're on the clock i think and i, I think a good example is like this next article i'm gonna bring up right here uh when there's highs there's also lows so epic games also laid off 900 employees and the reason Jesus. being you is know. being cut is because fortnite is basically falling off which says to me by the way it means the epic game store ain't making that much money uh to, to lose 900 jobs because fortnite is not doing well so imagine a studio like naughty dog where all they have is like the last of us um they don't have as a mega money cash because like that that's a one-time release it's gonna have like a spike and then it's gonna slowly start to go down versus fortnite was churning money over uh day and night because of the battle pass and like new seasons so like that's why i'm saying like i understand why they play defensively it's just like i feel like they're playing too defensively it's rough out here bro it's rough out here it's more competition than ever which also means you should step your shit off you're gonna have to make better games because there's more competition than ever I don't know, man. It, it sucks to see 900 people lost their jobs. Um, I, like I heard it decimated. Game. I heard it decimated um, the team that did Fall Guys. I heard they're the ones that got hit the most by these these layoffs. Their teams did, and they got acquired by Epic. So imagine that oh, you I get didn't acquired. Even know that. Ooh, yeah, imagine ooh, okay. Epic buying you out. You join them, and then the next thing you know, a year or two years down the road, they just they cut off all, like your legs, basically. You said visceral and games. Then, yeah, Oof. That and sucks then Epic, so, uh, don't forget about Rumbleverse too because they spent the yeah you know, that was another L L. Yeah. yeah that was ended up being another L because so. they wanted that to be their fighting what like another BR success game and yeah. it just ended up yeah. flopping too and died. Fall and guys so that was sad because Fall Guys was a success, but come on, Fall Guys was a success, but the problem is I don't think it's had the retention. Rumble, Rumbleverse. But Fall Guys has it. Was it here's the thing, right? They bought. They <laughs> the bought. <game> sucks. <laughs> yeah, they bought Fall Guys when it was like relevant, right? Like yeah, when it was like at its height, and they were just like, okay, yeah, we're gonna give them resources and go that. But I think it's it's just basically been like you know just the path of what it has always happened. Like the game's been out for like what four years now. It's, always, Three, it's gonna years. be a slow decline because they're not putting yeah. anything new out. Yeah, like right. think, like think about Among Us, right? Like Among Us is was top of the world, like top of gaming for like a good couple like six seven months, and then it just starts to yeah, slowly decline. Yeah. Gaming has become almost like TikTok, like social media, where like there's constantly yep. a new game coming out every week every yep. month so it's like it's hard to stay on top and like, the only fuck with your money the only two games i think that survived the test of time have been or three games would have been counter-strike world of warcraft um well world of warcraft's declined too that that's not as hype as it used to be anymore the deal the expansion that come shit out came out like, in yeah. 2004 i'm gonna give it its flowers i don't even play that shit it's still well, yeah, relevant to, it's people not, still play it it, yeah, but it's not as, as relevant as it used to be. Like, you know, yeah, back in yeah. kind of how we say about like Among true. Us, right? It's not as how it used to be. It was an expansion, the world stopped. But like, yeah, it's not like that anymore. Um, if you're asking me which one I think will be around inside. in the next five years, World of Warcraft or Fall Guys, though, I'd say World of Warcraft. Oh, yeah, World of Warcraft, I don't think it will. It's just, it's a, it's a, it's a, well, a household name at this point. Like, yeah. it pierce pulp culture. I don't think it'll ever disappear. Um, 
Uh, the other one's League of Legends. I don't think League of Legends will ever die. That game actually has ne will, will, has the same popularity forever. I don't think it'll ever disappear. As long as toaster PCs exist. Nope. Yeah, I don't think that game will ever disappear. And then, um, what was the other one? I mean, Call of Duty, I don't think ever is going to die. PUBG either. Mobile. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> PUBG I, died off, like, too. No, PUBG um, Mobile was popping. Yeah, Rainbow was going to die, but then a streamer brought it back from the dead. So. <laughs> what streamer was that? Uh, his name is I forgot, I forgot how to pronounce it. It's like Jinxy or Jinx. Uh, I didn't even. I was yeah, of yeah. He uh, he just started streaming. He's like he's like a like funny comedic type of dude, gotcha. and uh, he revived the entire game. <laughs> That's like the joke that goes around. A lot of people like were giving up on Rainbow and not caring about it anymore, and then like a lot of people started playing it. I've seen like a couple of my friends now. They're they're back on Rainbow and playing it again. So, mm, 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 yeah. mm. um, another set of layoffs. This one's really gonna bother you too. Uh, uh, Telltale yeah. had some major layoffs, and The Wolf Among Us Two is not uh, in good state because of it. Uh, remember, fuck. remember, remember when you guys were telling me you got paid? What buck? I buy what buck? You still need to play. You it, still bro. need to I'm play it. I don't even fuck if you don't get this second. You're still gonna play it. I said I'll play it when the sequel comes out because I no, imagine, you're gonna play it. I imagine it's a sequel bait, but now the sequel is kind of in limbo. I don't know. You should still play it. You should still play it. I'm I play telling Lords you. of Fall, and I still gotta be you Mirage. Spider Man next one. week. <laughs> This one sucks even more sucks. because Telltale oh, literally like, <laughs> resurrected. Studio. Yeah, and Die. then they got resurrected, and now you laid all people again. Like it's Jesus. this is this ripple like that's going on in just every industry, not only just tech. It really sucks. So, like, I even had to go through this in my own job, and and I'm in healthcare, so this is really ridiculous. Like I I really don't like what we did during the pandemic. Like it was nice that we were able to expand and get remote jobs for a lot of people. Like we literally were forced to work, uh, forced to work from home. It was and, a quick um, reaction. It wasn't. Yeah, it was a quick reaction. Fast, yeah. A lot of jobs were created just out of thin air. Like everybody was just like, oh, we can just we just need to just do a massive hire, and then they realized, you know, two three years later that. We can't afford to sustain and going back to Ethos to point, we can't afford to sustain all of these yeah. extra mouths that we have to feed. So now we gotta just do a rift and just, you know, mass uh mass fire everybody. Yeah. And, and it just really sucks. And the other thing too, because if they did a bunch of jobs and a lot of them were remote, right? Like there's a lot of a cost like physically being because a lot of that came from because they had a lot of people working at home, right? Uh, physical like cost of like the physical building um to be i mean you remember g4 or whatever but like you know like the, just the cost of like having a physical physical place that you have to turn on have it's active expensive. yeah it's expensive and those cut those price those uh that that uh expense got cut because of the pandemic because people weren't physically appearing in places um so that was what then they were like oh yeah we can just put all these into jobs and get these new jobs and now we can do all this stuff remote and da, 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 and that means now we don't have to you know all this money now now we just have like wasted but yeah like what you said right like we could just hire a bunch of people to do this and i i agree with you i think a lot of it was like it was just short-sighted they didn't think of the long term of because remember how when 2020 2021 it was like gaming's revenue like exploded like everybody was indoors everybody was gaming now 2022 2023 people started leaving the house now it's starting to go back down to how it was like original levels and maybe a little bit less now because now people want to be more outside than after being cooped up for a couple of years um and add inflation into yeah the then add the just, inflation yeah. problem too inside of that so that's another thing and the cost of living has gone up and you know all this other crap that we're dealing with like it's just it's just a lot of just unfortunately a lot of things from different areas are all hitting simultaneously and now it's yeah now we're just we're gonna have to pay the piper basically and a lot of things are getting I wonder if I wonder how many games are gonna die because of this. Like how many games we don't we haven't heard of that are just gonna die now and be canceled because you know we had to cancel the people that were working on it and now we don't have the resources to finish like all these extra projects we were working yeah. on. So yeah, we don't know. Home. I mean, twenty twenty four might end up being kind of bad. Like we, yeah. feel, it's kind of like it might be bad. Because we've got we've gotten literally blessed this year. Like this yeah. year has been crazy for gaming because all those games that got delayed, 2020, yeah. 2021, 2022, all decided to come delayed, out. Delayed, yeah. So, bubbles so, about to burst. Yeah. I mean, my Just remember how 2020 was? Like all the games basically got delayed or they got canceled. Mm -hmm. And so that's why those years in the pandemic were kind of, kind of boring. We were just like, where's all the games? Well, they got delayed to this next year, next year. But then like what JG said, once we got near the tail and all those games that were supposed to come out during the pandemic they all bursted out and, and came out in 2022 and 2023 and that's what we just had banger 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 it was just a bunch of really good games um now i think yeah i think it's going to be like now we're losing resources now these games that are supposed to come out have lesser resources now the chances that they end up being as good as what they were originally intended to be because they had more resources is probably not going to be that much probably not going to be that good 
um you know i guess in that there's that question of are we going to see another like elden ring are we going to see another Baldur's gate are we going to see another one of those now until like the next decade now because of this you said more last of us remasters oh yeah God. are we going to see more remasters? i mean we already had two this year granted they were really good but we got resident evil 4 remake and then we also got dead space remake so we we, we already saw the pattern where two studios just were like hey we're just going to remake what we made so is that what that's just going to be the pattern you now think for remake should be nominated for game of the year no uh it depends on how much they change i would say I depends say on that. no I no, no. I think you I've seen be people. I've seen people like, oh, they're not going to nominate Resident Evil Four. Like it shouldn't no. be. It's not a new game. I don't think Four. I think there's an argument for Dead Space because they did a lot of changes to Dead Space. I like, would say the same thing for Mass Effect. Like, if they remade it, it's still not a new game. Like it's because because you, you're, you're basing it off of something versus something. It's like c- comparing biscuits from the box versus scratch. Like scratch. Like it's just like it's not the same thing. Now you say whatever. You need to make a new you category. Had a, you had a template. It was already great. More. Okay, what if yeah. you played a game that was originally like uh, a different format? Like, what if the game was like, okay, so for example, like, what if it was like the OG Resident Evil, where like it's a completely different like camera style and work, and then you remake it in a modern like setting? So now, like, oh, like GTA, right? What if they remade like GTA one or two because it's top down and it's been rechanged now? I'll just give them their own category, game. best remake of the year, since we're getting them all the yeah, goddamn time. time. Yeah. So you put them in a, like a remake category? Yeah. Not game of the year. You can be in other categories because I mean, Return of Evil 2, I, I think, and Final Fantasy 7 remake were were in categories. Um, you know, the didn't, year they came didn't out. Didn't Final Fantasy Here's 7 a, remake get nominated for game of the year? I don't think it got nominated for game of the year. I have to look at it. Here's another did, did reason I don't want it to be nominated. Any remakes for nominated. When did that come out? 2021? Let's see. Uh, I'll yeah. let you talking. Yeah, 2021. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. Go ahead. I was going to say, another, another reason I wouldn't want remakes nominated for Game of the Year is because it's a slippery slope. It goes back to the defensive play. If a, if a remake wins Game of the Year, you know what these studios are going to say? Oh, hmm. I can just uh, remake Final Fantasy X and uh, win Game of the Year. I already have the template for it. That would save me a lot of money. Uh, let's just remake a game we know everybody loves already. Ah, shit. It, it did. Yeah. It was yeah, nominated. And then they're going to make it, more. It, it they're they're going to pump out more. We we need new IPs. So, so it has been nominated. I, I, yeah. didn't, I didn't agree with it that year, though. I don't think it should. But Cause seven, I, I think I, Seven I was a great example of, like, they changed the story. The story changed. They changed literally every aspect of, like, the game. Like, it doesn't look like the same game that the OG was from because it was, like, over, like, what, a decade? It is a very different old. game, yeah, from the first one. That, it's that's just what I'm a, saying. Like, what if it's a game? Obviously, like, I wouldn't you say... Gauge, how do you gauge what's enough is different? Um, I mean, I would say 7 is a massive difference. Like, combat is completely different. Uh, story's been changed. Uh, mechanically, visually, it's not, like, just a little, like, oh, we just put a paint on it and it made it look better. Like, it it was an astronomical like it felt like as if it was a brand new game they had to build from scratch even though it followed a uh i guess like a, a skeleton of what the first game was mm-hmm. like the characters and stuff but they changed stuff like barrett as a character changed they changed his motivations and his writing um yeah I, I i guess that would be my take is like if you go as far as something like seven i think you can be nominated i think that's fair because you are essentially making a brand new game but i do think Something like Resident Evil 4 remake, I don't think that should be nominated. I don't think that's enough of a change because it's still, you know, just graphically, you know, some changes. All these muddied ass conversations could be stopped with just new IPs. Yeah. Man. It could be, but, you know, making new IPs are hard. And then it's even harder to sell them to publishers because then, you know, how do you convince a publisher to take a, a risk on an untested? Yeah, an you know, exa- example IP. would be uh, example would be Wild Hearts. They shut down the service for yeah. that shit. Remember right. Anthem? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> remember that? Yeah, like there you go. You yeah, remember Anthem? That's that's a good example. Uh, to be yeah. fair though, they did it to themselves. You remember that uh, <laughs> that other EA one? You remember that? You remember that other EA game that came out? The the oh, mage one this year. Oh, you don't remember? Immor- yeah, Immor- Immortals. Immor- Immortals. Immortals. Yep. New I mean, IP. Uh, come on. I, I, we're at a point in our career. I, I don't know about you. I'm at a point in my career where I can look at a game. I'll be like, that shit's gonna fail. I yeah. knew that game was going to fail. Like, come on. I, why yeah, did they back I can that see shit? It too. Yeah, but. I can see a lot of it. Kind of when they first revealed it, I was kind of like, ooh, I, I feel like this is going to shutter their studio. And lo and behold, it was like, oh, damn, they're on life support. I was like, yeah, I kind of saw that coming. Freaking um, unfortunate. Speaking of failures, uh, Hyenas. Yeah, oh, that, that new shooter from Sega was being published one. by Sega. Uh, they had a beta literally like a month ago. I was upset because I didn't get to play during that week. It was a time beta. Apparently, after that beta, they had a, they got enough data and they said this shit ain't coming out. The game has been shelved. It's been canceled. 
so it's never coming out so if you got a chance to play it if you got some footage that's about all you're gonna get from it why um they I don't, I don't know I should have deleted my footage. I didn't realize it was going to be so rare now. Yeah, you can sell it, bro. You can I recorded it. like three hours of me playing that, like multiplayer. Oh, dang. Yeah. Um, oh, a more sad news. This one's from coming out the Sony camp. Apparently in the last uh, year or so, Square Enix has lost $2 billion in value. Uh, Final Fantasy 16 did not sell well. So apparently Sony ponies spend more time in Twitter spaces than they do playing games. I lied earlier. I made a joke about them just watching cutscenes. They don't even do that. Because apparently this game didn't sell very well. Uh, which, I mean, I understand why. Shit's boring. But uh, well, no, 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 no. To to be fair, to be fair, um, um, uh, I I looked into this. Uh, I think that it's been a little bit of um, I hate to say not fake news, but I think a lot of people have been interpret interpreting it incorrectly. A lot of people have been trying to say that sixteen is the reason why this happened, but it's actually not. Um, it was before 16. It was actually mm. the, the fault of 16 actually did really good according to their estimates. It was remember Forspoken. <laughs> it mm. was Forspoken in that other game project they were working on that that cost and that 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 cost this value to drop happen. That's a lot of money still, um, regardless. And and Avengers. I'm sorry. It was Avengers and mm. Forspoken. Those two combined caused the million. It's 20 billion or two billion. Yeah, you yeah. only had to pay to get the license well, for Avengers. You had to yeah. pay to get the license for them, the IP for them, and then they gave it to the game sale again. Yep, and then it flopped. That was the it's biggest, awesome. like, yeah, that was the biggest, like, crater for them is Marvel. They spent so much on that IP just to get access to it and get exclusive rights for it, and then it it basically died and killed and put them aside, I would hate to see Square go under. I hope they recover. Uh, you know what this means? What? Phil Spencer's rubbing his rubbing his hands right now like bird. Like, ooh, y'all on hey, sale, y'all buddy. Like y'all need some have some money. Y'all look like y'all need some said two you, billion. You said you twisted two your billion? ankle. You need some ice. Like, he ah. said two, <laughs> two billion, buddy. Hey, let me tell you how much we pay for Activision. <laughs> <laughs> That's shit. a drop in the bucket, baby. That's fucking crazy. We paid uh, that for Bethesda. Man, yeah. Sony better. Sony better try. Yeah, they better be careful, bro. If they, if, they, if, if Microsoft acquired Square, the Sony ponies would. Oh, it would be apocalypse. It, uh, oh, yeah, they're, 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 they're really yeah. done after that. They're really done after that. What is the point? Throw their PS5s. the point anymore? You're fighting back, man. Yeah, that that would be terrifying. To just all oh, lose all. Well, you know, it's funny you say that because um during the uh the 14 um they showed final fantasy 14's expansion and lo and behold our lord and savior phil spencer he came out on stage and everybody started like sweating bullets because everyone was like why is he here because they're thinking he's about to announce that he's acquired square enix oh man now <laughs> phil spencer <laughs> like the he like the boogie man he's now, literally man. thanos like anytime he shows up like people are just like oh are you, are you what are you about to do dog I mean, and he's phil like spencer just listen to a blank check like, what does that mean <laughs> yeah. you're bought <laughs> he was just there to say like hey he was just there to say like he was playing final fantasy 14 he had an account and that it was coming to xbox but that he basically was making a him and um basically uh the the uh, president of square enix they were shaking and they were just like hey we want to going forward we want to have a partnership with you guys and bring a lot of our final fantasy games over to you so it seems like sony's not paying that check no more it sounds like and now they're gonna start doing some more final fantasy stuff with xbox and now, exclusivity so. stuff was whack anyway it man, was bad yeah, that that's that exclusive crap that they were pulling to like um I mean they pretty much confirmed it between Spider Man and Final Fantasy that they were literally holding them hostage to avoid uh Xbox ever getting them by just every renewing it every single time to just five years later just to spite them so they'd never get it. So yeah, yeah that sucks. Get it together. Um, yep. other, other news, this might be bad depending on how you interpret it. Another I, bad. I, I think it's bad news. Um, what's the name? So Disney CEO, uh, has been heard around the offices showing interest in potentially trying to purchase a game studio or a game publisher because they want to take gaming more seriously. And currently they've specifically mentioned trying to purchase electronic arts. And it's been reported that EA has also been tooting that thing up because they're looking to sell. Um, I pray this does not happen. I do not want Disney to get EA because EA is already bad. bad. You're gonna add an even worse person. Worse on top person. Of, and then on top of that, I just I just need EA 
to finish the Jedi trilogy <laughs> before you sell. <laughs> please, just finish three before Disney, please. Right, right. If you are going to sell, please finish the Jedi series before. Maybe bring Titanfall 3 back. Like, let's, yeah, what, y'all what go we, get Mickey and Titanfall. There you go. That's oh an announcement. My God. That's the announcement. This <laughs> news is so fucking weird because Disney is not even in a good financial spot. Their, their stocks are fucking low right now. And it's because the Marvel movies have not been doing good. Disney Plus subscriptions are below. Going down. Below. They're going down. So I'm like, when I read this, I'm like, what? Like, y'all money is is down. And y'all trying Maybe to... Maybe that's why. Maybe they need to... Oh, uh, yeah. They're trying yeah, to find yeah, research so they can get, get more get money. And and Ahsoka yeah, is carrying yeah, Disney right now. That's that's the only thing I think they got going right now. Yeah, it's all right. It's, yeah, it's, it's bad out here. Like, and, and then... And, don't even count, um, you know, what's going on on the Disney side, but ESPN has been uh, yeah. suffering layoffs too. Like, don't forget the live action that, movies. That part, yeah, live the, action, the live actual game. live TV aspect. So it's really bad. Like I said, I don't, I truly don't know what's going on. Like, uh, people were mad just because, because uh, me and my wife, we have, uh, we have annual passes for the Disney uh, theme parks. A true Florida they, man. Hey. I know, right? I got it. I got it. Yeah. I'm right there, bro. So, um, so you know, I already knew as soon as the next year hit that they were going to go up in prices, and sure enough, it was like, oh, oh yeah, no. you got to pay like fifty dollars more for your pass. How much are they um, annual? Um, I you think remember. for me, um, you get a I discount like, when you're a Florida resident, right? You do get a discount. I think it's like three fifty um per pass, year? Uh, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah. that's not terrible for a year. And you just go not, whenever, depending on how much you go. Yeah, you yeah. Go, yeah, you oh, can go whenever. Bad. Like it depends on which one you get, but they're like blackouts, um, no period. But it's a holiday or whatever, and you can't go. Um, okay. Yeah, you can't go. But um, but yeah, I, I knew it was gonna go up. I'm like Disney is trying to. I think they're at, they're at this point. They're getting desperate. They're just trying to pick at whatever they think is gonna is gonna work and get on the most profit at this point. Like I said, I don't know. I don't know the the exact reason why. Like I said, it just could be multiple reasons. Maybe people aren't watching TV anymore. Um, like TV said, Marvel. I mean, uh, the Marvel movies. Marvel, ain't baby. No more. The, the uh, the Marvel series ain't hitting no more, so that was like you know their main thing, and uh, you know you can only bring out so many Pixar movies per year that's going to yeah. you know captivate the people. So like I say I, I I truly don't know what it is, but yeah, I, I mean the only the only reason why this makes sense with the EA stuff is because you already gave them uh, the Star Wars IP, so. And EA is you know supposed to allegedly do something with Marvel too, supposed to make uh what was it the the um the Captain America or at Black Panther. I think they're supposed to make their own yeah. um their own game with that too. So you have those relationships already. And EA has a studio in Orlando too. So that would make sense, you know, from from a financial standpoint. So I could actually see this happening, but I, I'm gonna be on the same side as you all. I don't think that this is gonna be a good move. I think this Microsoft is gonna be buy bad. them. Please EA. buy them before Disney. Please. Now that, yeah, that's dude, crazy, bro. Please. That's crazy. That's crazy. I'd rather that take Microsoft. Though. Please, just take I it. Please. It, I know it's Microsoft, but Microsoft did not need to buy everything. Bro. I know, but I, I, I'd rather. If, I'm telling you, if Disney actually is planning on doing, it, I would just, I would beg Phil Spencer, please, just, just take it from them, please. I'd rather yeah. have Microsoft than them. I, I had it on the notes earlier, but I took it off because I was the only one that played it. But this actually segues into it perfectly. So there's a new game that recently came out. You probably never heard of it because they really did not promote it. It just a trailer hit my sub box. It's called Disney Speedstorm. Now, if this game is in the indication of what Disney is trying to do with gaming, you do not want Disney to buy EA because you thought microtransactions were bad with EA. Wait till oh. Disney gets a hold of it. Now, Disney Speedstorm, it's available literally on every platform from PC to PS4, 5, all that. It's literally playable on everything with crossplay. And the core game is actually really good. It is a kart racer that actually tries some new stuff. And I like I made a video because I was like really impressed by it. The problem is it's just microtransactions and pop-ups all over the fucking place. And it breaks the balance of the game. Like one of the things that they do that's unique with it is like um they have classes for each characters. So like there's like brawler class, defensive, like speech, like thriller, double like dash. Cases. Yeah, it, uh, I don't remember double that. I don't really remember. Um, I like had like heavier guys and then the little small guys and stuff like well, that. Well, it affects the way you do combat in the game. So right. Like, let's okay. say you pick a brawler class, one of the brawler characters like Mulan. What happens is whenever you go to one of the mystery crates, you get more mm-hmm. you know combat items and defensive. Oh, yeah. So that's pretty. Okay. So there's a little bit more strategy based on the character you pick, and there's like this mechanic where you can like grind rails for like there's regular shortcuts and then there's super shortcuts. You can grind ra- rails, but the thing is you have to keep your balance with the analog stick like tony hawk because you can fall off the rail or like it'll slow you down it does some unique things that's like really cool and fun but then like i said it's just micro chances out the ass 
and because it has that um that system with uh, the class system you have to buy the packs to get the characters so then like you can get free characters but it takes forever to unlock them so what happens is you get online everybody's got all the good characters uh, that, yeah. that, that got the broken because each character has a special move too on top of that you have an ultimate right. uh so if you're not access to it i'm just like you're yeah. cooked yeah. yeah so i can see disney doing more of that type of stuff in time like imagine fucking cow Kesses with a mickey mouse hat bro like i don't want to see that shit dog you imagine every game becoming a kingdom hearts game <laughs> oh god please help me no, uh, no, i couldn't sense. i couldn't you imagine mass effect becoming kingdom hearts like yeah. this <laughs> mickey, <laughs> mickey in space <laughs> where, where are we going, <laughs> <laughs> let's go to the moon <laughs> donald duff has biotics oh, <laughs> he's <shit>. like <laughs> people <laughs> Like, and, Don, and Donald's there with uh, with Rex, and they're just shy gunning people. They're gonna start trying to make live action uh, live action EA movies and shit. Like I don't oh see God. that. I do not want to see that, bro. Please God, no, bro. Like in live action no. FIFA. I'm like what? Oh God, no. Um. Anyways, <laughs> let's move on to the social justice warrior section of the podcast before we wrap this up. One piece of news is going on in the gaming community that's really got people uh, grinding their gears is the Unity engine. For those unaware, the Unity engine for the longest, like the last 10 plus years, has been an engine for the people. One of the main reasons why you've seen a lot of um, like the rise of uh, indie games is thanks to the Unity engine. It's an engine that anybody could have downloaded. It was free. Develop your game, publish it to Steam, Xbox, PlayStation, whatever. It was a staple in the indie development scene. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's no longer going to be free. Not only are they going to be charging a flat fee for it, but they also want royalties. So from what I read in this article, um, any game that makes $200,000 in the span of a year, you have to start paying 20 cents per download. Now, why does that matter? Well, because not uh, not only will they have to pay them for royalties, but then you also got to keep in mind that Steam takes 30%. I don't know what Xbox and PlayStation takes. So now you have a second middleman in the hand of the pot. And the Unity community was not fucking with this shit. Uh, they started protesting. Uh, <laughs> Unity, Unity has a... Because um, that, that 20 cents doesn't sound like a lot, but that adds up. It's really a cool. lot. Please keep in mind, people got to pay taxes and shit like that. So you're eating into people's profits. You're reinstalling um, the game. You're uninstalling the game. And, and oh, by the way, what really made people mad, I almost forgot this part, is this doesn't just apply to new games that haven't been published going forward, like in 2024. This applies retroactively to any game that's ever been used on Unity starting today, yesterday, whatever. So people are fucking Same. pissed about this shit. Um, so like in protest, what developers have been doing is apparently Unity has its own ad platform. So like, let's say you have like a mobile game that was designed via Unity. You can use their platform to serve serve ads into your game so that, uh, you know, just in case people don't buy the premium, you can make, make some money with ads. People have turned that shit off because what happens is Unity doesn't make any money either. Uh, and then within like a week, Unity backtracked and now they're talking about restructuring the whole idea of what they wanted. And they fire Unity. the CEO. Did yeah. he leave too? Yeah, yeah. And like, but like the story's still not done playing out. But like, I was really interested to hear what your take was on this. Since you're a residential game dev, I know JG is our SJW person, but I'm nah, gonna give the yeah, right here. Either, no, you're either. the game dev. What, what did you think about this story? Uh, yeah, I thought this was crazy. Uh, when I first saw the announcement of what they were gonna do, I was like, what the? Like, I, I thought it was some fake. I thought somebody was making it up because I was like, no way someone would be this stupid to try to do something like this. I wonder, kind of like what JG said, I wonder if like this all plays into that whole thing of all these different factors are all hitting us all at once and people are losing money and now people are trying to recruit where they can to get money. Uh, makes me wonder if Unity's been like in a hole or they've been like in a very red area and they needed to make something so desperate. They had to do something so desperate in order to get out of a hole um that's what makes me think that's why they did this was because maybe financially in the back end things aren't looking too good and they're like we might be out of business in a year if we don't change something around here so they went as far to do something this desperate which i feel like anyone with a brain would automatically think this is obviously not going to be very popular uh and i think they made a lot of very shitty choices they didn't really think it through i think a lot of executives made this call and i think a lot of the like middle people who have experience with like the actual like developers who use their engine and stuff were like yo this is going to destroy our community like i this is not a smart idea and they're just like but we need money so shit oh well figure it out 
Um, yeah, it's really bad. Um, I mean, Epic, like every other engine dunked on them, like Epic dunked, dunked on them and was like, oh, you should go over here to Unreal. We give you way better royalties and you get to use our engine for free and we're never going to charge you for da 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 da. Um, you know, uh, uh, was it Godot or yeah, Godot, some other engines also, RPG Maker, they, they were all just dunking on this, like, hey, this is free money for us then. And a lot of people were, um, I even saw some developers on Twitter because I follow quite a bit. They were straight up making like, you know, the whole, you know, image with the whole paragraph of text of like an announcement. And they were straight up saying, hey, y'all, I'm going to tell you straight up. Y'all better buy our game now because on January the 23rd, we are taking the game off of the store page. Like our game that we've had and we're not going to sell it anymore because it's a Unity game and we refuse to give them money. That's like how like far like a lot of the indie developers are going to just screw them. It's like, all right, you want to screw us? Well, we're going to screw them. It seems like a lot of them are, which is nice to see, a lot of the developers are really united behind this and they're all like, there seems like everyone's working together to like say, how can we hurt Unity even further Um, and potentially like make them lose more money than they've been losing. So yeah, uh, it's a very, it's a very shitty situation all around. The damage has already been done in my opinion um i don't even know how you recover from this at this point like you have to basically just renege on everything that you said and did and just hope for the best like you do yeah hope for the best and maybe throw in some free some free store money or something like that to make them feel better or i don't know i just don't know i I, they're about to lose a lot of people i think the issue with what what they did is because i think they could have got away with this the issue is they just they didn't put it in slow they tried to put it in too fast they did all at once yeah Yeah. yeah. i i think what they should have did is they slowly bleed them out they they should have they should have been transparent they'd be like look on the back end we're not making a lot of money this is a free platform (laughs) the ads are not making us a lot of money so we have to change the structure so we this is what i did we have two new structure plans for you. You can A, opt into one where you can use the Unity engine, but it's now going to cost you, I don't know, 500 or like a thousand bucks. It's a flat fee. That's what it costs All to use that. the Unity. That'll help us keep our servers or our business in line. Or you can go with this one where it's free, but we get royalties. We get 20 cents on every download, basically, uh, going into 2024 and further. I think they could have got away with that if they were transparent about it, basically. I mean, they I were already they're... giving royalties before then, but I, I guess it's been increased. Yeah, that was like the whole thing. Yeah, like more than what it was. Yeah, yeah. I think the other thing is they really mess people over because they said that hey, like the people are already using the Unity engine, you're not grandfathered in. Like, how are you gonna re- how are you gonna yeah. retroactively you know bake this in with your new plan and then just push it out? Like that's that's really messed up, and that, and that's what really got people. They're like, oh hell yeah. no! Nah. Like, not only are you gonna introduce this new plan. It's not free, but mm-hmm. you say that the people already used it. We got to pay too. Hell no. Like, but like, this, this perfect sorry, example, sorry. though, they, I mean, people literally banded together and they voted with their wallet, bro. They're like, no, we're not accepting this plan. And we're going to we're going to make sure that you don't get any additional money from us. And now look what happened. Like, obviously, this this is still, you know, pending here. But at least they, you know, put the the real fire under the unity's ass and we're like no nah, like we're not accepting this and made them immediately try to retract their statement yeah i was gonna say uh the other thing that uh man i'm trying to remember what i was gonna say because you said something very good uh it was um uh a oh, man i hate i just my my, my oh. I got something while you think of it. Go ahead, while my brain's trying to remember. I think the funny thing about this story is, like, all they did was push everybody into Unreal Engine, like, for the people's next game. Because Unreal is free, and it looks better than a lot of these Unity Engine games. I remember now. And, like... Like for me, like you're like Wukong when they announced the Wukong game, I was like, you ever looked at the game? And be like, oh, I think that's running on Unreal. That it has like a distinct look. So it's like people mm-hmm. are just gonna use that shit instead. But go ahead, eat those. Okay, I remember now. Uh, what I was gonna say was kind of what JG said too. Is so whenever you're developing a game or something like that, you usually before you start it or when, when you're starting it, you have like a budget set. It's like, all right, this is how much money we're gonna spend on this game, and we're giving it to make sure that we spend this amount of money for this amount to do all these sort of things. Now imagine you're 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 three years into a game that you were using unity for and you haven't told anybody this game hasn't been announced yet so it's been still behind the scenes you've been working with this engine for the past three years you've hired people to work with this unity engine and you're all building it on this unity and you have a set budget so you make sure you're gonna be able to you know not run out of money and then out of nowhere someone just says to you oh yeah by the way here's some more here's a new expense that's way bigger than what you were ever expecting and, and it just gonna comes out of left field and now it's gonna hit you right when you're in the middle of development and then there's you're kind of screwed because it's like I can't move engines because that costs money to make me move. I've got to have people that can use the new engine. So I have to teach a bunch of people who know how Unreal works. Yeah, it's, it's a shit show. You're, you're screwed. Yeah, it's pretty bad. So, yeah, yeah I can see why a lot of people are pissed. So expect to see less games running on Unity, ladies and gentlemen. 
Yo, it's a quick question, Ethos. Weren't you initially when you started Samurai Zero? Weren't you doing Unity and then you switched yeah, over? Yeah, and I fucking hated it. Yeah, I remember it. it. Yeah, I remember <laughs> that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I fucking hated it. Yeah, yeah they would have got you your royalties. Right? <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? Yeah. Ethos would have been. would have been the victim. You yep. were victim. Shout out, shout out. Oh, shit. Shout out to bullet. KL, man. He he convinced me. He brought me over to Epic, and he was like, "Hey, bro, let me brainwash you with this Unreal Engine." <laughs> so shout out to him. He saved me a bullet. That's fucking crazy. Uh, last but not least, social justice warrior news we got for you. Currently, there's a writer strike. Well, not anymore. They recently worked out a deal, but the actor strike is still going on. Um, there's strikes going on in the United States, and there's another one that could be looming among us. Um, the S A G F T R A, which represents a bunch of different people, including voice actors basically the voice actors union uh they're looking at what's going on with the writers and the actors and they said hmm because the writers won the writers won the actors i'm pretty sure they're gonna win too they're like hmm maybe we should be getting (laughs) yeah maybe we should be getting paid more uh and i wanted to bring this article up just to let you guys know it has not happened but it is in talks do not be surprised if there is a video game voice actor strike coming which means it's gonna halt the production of video games um so enjoy your games right now because there could be something looming um what's your take on this jay hey man i i seen it coming i seen it coming and i remember uh when this first got brought up with the writers and the actors people were like oh man video games are safe video games are safe i'm like okay well let's just wait and see right and and sure enough now this news popped up and i was like well here you go y'all better enjoy what we had this year we had an amazing year because if they end up striking, I mean, you know, two, three months, that could still be, you know, uh, very detrimental to the life cycle of a video game, especially, you know, you're you're doing a very compelling story and you hired on some some real, you know, well-renowned voice actors to, you know, voice your characters and in the video game. And then, you know, they're like, well, we, we're striking right now. Like, uh, you know, maybe no offense to, to whatever developer studio, but you know as a union we gotta we gotta get you know what's fair for us so um so we'll see when some happening um but I, I hope that they don't strike but i was like yeah i i, I seen it coming like i didn't think the video games were safe um in this situation they were like oh man well these at least if i got video games you know I, you know i'll be good you know i can i can do without not having movies but video games i'm like bro it's it's the same stuff that could potentially be happening so we're gonna see what happens with the actors. Um, if the actors end up winning, then I don't think that the voice actors would separately do a strike. That again, that, that doesn't make much sense to me unless they just have significantly um, different deals going on there. But um, I, I would think that they would be more or less on the on the same playing field or similar playing field as far as like their their uh, foundational. Uh, deals with whatever in their contract so again we'll wait and see but like i said when, when i saw this news i was like yep I, I wasn't surprised every story has a beginning middle and end just out of curiosity where does the voice acting land in the story ethos in terms of development like is it do you get the voice actors early just get the lines in is the middle towards the end like how important is that um so at least from my experience it's kind of in the middle like you don't really need it early on as a matter of fact you could use ai or you could use basically like uh one thing that we would use just for placeholder would be like uh and a lot of studios do this is uh was it a text to voice where they just type in the lines and they just have a voice line printed out and it's basically uh, uh ai and then they would insert it into the game just as a placeholder um But that really just depends on what type of game you're making. If you're making a more story base, um, you kind of want to bring the 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 voice actors in a little bit earlier in the process. Like once you have the story written out, once you have the dialogue already figured out from the writers um, and then you need that within the casting. Um, There's two ways that it works. Uh, If you're really lucky and this is the hardest part. If you're really lucky, you have a chance to get a session done where you have multiple of your voice actors in the same studio with each other acting. And they can act off of each other. But that's not usually the case because you're dealing with actors in different. Uh, um, I, I know this is like this for Mass Effect. You'll have them in different. Uh, Jennifer Hell speaks about this. Um, there will be in different time zones and they, they're they all doing different projects. So they can't all be at the same place, same time. And the studio has a certain 
timeline that they have to follow so they can't wait for people so what will happen is maybe they'll have like one person come in and say their lines and then they'll have the recordings of those lines and then they'll run those they'll play those lines back for the second voice actor so at least they have someone they can bounce off of but it's hard for the first person who has to do it who has nobody no reference so they kind of have to like talk to an invisible person that's not there that doesn't have any voice lines um so yeah it's a very tricky thing uh as for development um i would say it's not usually showing up in like the pre-production phase for the most part but it does show up when you're in like you're straight up in the heart the heart of the game which is the production of it because once you start making your characters you have to figure out who's going to sound like them you got to get that person you have to schedule all the sessions um uh you already know it if you're playing a, a game where it's like a viol- like a combat game you know you're gonna have to record thousands of lines starfield mass effect any rpg they're recording thousands of lines if something goes wrong with that or uh, a certain scene ends up being changed and you have to call them back to redo the lines or change the lines because something's changed in the game it's a lot of work so yeah they're very involved and they're very important uh, especially casting directors and um audio engineers and all the rest of that all so, i got out it's of a this lot. All I got out of this is you said Megan Fox sucks. Because uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, her performance, I thought people overreacted when that trailer dropped. No, it Cop. was not good. When I when I played the game, it was bad. I was like, it was bad. That blaze enchanted. I was like, bitch, what the fuck? <laughs> I don't. I don't feel like the casting director either. Uh, there's nothing. I think the casting director didn't care or just simply was like, no, nah, because just some stupid. Everybody thing. else's voice actor in Mortal Kombat is stellar. That's one thing I'll say about the story. It's it's cool. It's well, they're that, great performances, right. which That's also speaks values to how are, talented those actors are. Yes, you can do they it without are other people specific. in the room. But I think the casting director and yeah, the casting director and the, just the director in general who takes care of you, I think it's the casting director um, or the director for for the for whoever's taking care of the audio and just directing the, the voice actors. It, they are very instrumental because they're, it is their job to basically set the scene for that actor and to explain what they're doing, where they are, so that they can do the, give the best performance they can and then also to help correct them. Um, I've had to do it multiple times for my game where it would be like, I would tell them a certain thing, I would say, okay, here's a line. They'd say the line, I'd be like, uh, try more energetic. Try to play out, like emphasize this part of it. Try to say that because they don't know what necessarily yeah, be a direct- they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> And there's some some of them that um I, I know for Fallout, there's some of them that don't even know the game they're working on. So they have no clue the setting, they don't know who they are, they don't know, they're just saying lines and they don't know anything. Um, so that's the most difficult stuff. Um, but a good example, because I know some people try to shit on a lot of time like actors, but I, I can't stress it enough. Cyberpunk, Idris Elba does a phenomenal job. And that's just a great example of not only a great actor, that he can translate into video game. Because, you know, a lot of times when they do that, it, it ends up being bad, like Megan Fox, right? It ends up being really terrible. But I think the reason why Idris is able to do it is not only is he very talented, but I think they had a very good casting director who really guided him and helped explain, like, this is the world, this is who you are. And it, he, it makes your perform- it makes it where those performances are very memorable compared to just being, like, a Megan Fox performance, where it feels like this is just something we can do for marketing. Let's just throw it into the game. Like, if I was going to throw you guys in the game, right, I would be spending time with you to, like, actually make sure that you guys could put your best foot forward. and Develop us. Develop and, and you. And not just, just be like, in there. Yeah. yeah, here's some lines. Just spit them out. And, uh, yeah, that's it. And just send them to me as a wave. Like, I'd actually be there and hearing you say your lines and giving you feedback in real time. So, yeah. Megan Fox. Is, there you uh, go. She, she is the pure definition of pretty privilege because there's no way that, you know, someone not, who brought her in here was like, hey, man, those voice, those lines sound that's really some good. good lies, baby. Yeah, it's terrible. Very interesting stuff. Very interesting stuff. We will see how this one plays out. We need more time. Um, I'm always for people getting a check, so I don't really care if people strike. Get your bag. Um, UPS man getting that bag, bro. They get. I Yo. think. I think they can they go, go up crazy. to like 170 thousand now if you if you work. Uh, I was like, that's crazy. Yeah, I might become a UPS driver, bro. That's, that's crazy. Bro. And UPS always hiring. Don't. I mean, it's a hard Shoot. job. You are gonna be working out, but like, they my make, friend just they got a job there. It. He he, he uh, wakes up at 3 a.m. He does 3 to 9. And he's like, it's the easiest. <laughs> he said, I just, just do the job. I get paid a good amount. He's like, I'm just... It's, a, regular, it's an easy job, I think, if you're a young man. But like, if it you're is. But you get older, yeah. yeah. No, like, <laughs> What's yeah. the name? Um, Remember that Craig Magline, man. Uh-huh. It, it, it ain't aged well. Now it took it took forever. But he said, "Don't be mad. UPS is hiring." <laughs> 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 now, you, now you can't even say there's no business. Yeah. Man. Now you get paid. <laughs> And you and you get bad bitches. Bitches love UPS, man. Uh, they ask man. you about your pack. Man, you about to deliver all types of packages. <laughs> you gonna know where all the baddies is in the neighborhood. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> What's the name? Uh, that's all I got on the show notes. I got anything else I want to add before we wrap this one up? That's it. 
This is a, a long banger for y'all. It's almost three hours. What's your game of the year so far? Still Star Wars. Star Wars Jedi. UJG has it changed. I can't. I can't call it, man. I really you can't, can't call, call it. Is it, it right so now. long? No, no, no. It's 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 not up there. It's like in my top five, or it may it may slip out, but it ain't. And it's not my it's not my. All right, we'll yet. see after Spider Man. Then yeah, Spider Man don't we'll ask me question again. Yeah, we'll we'll we see. We know yours is Boulder Gate, Gate, right? Is it that or Cyberpunk? One of those two. Armor Core is very close. Mm-hmm. Armor Core is very very close. So Armor Core is so fun. So it yeah. might might be out there for me, man. With that being said, knowing that that blade is enchanted. JG, what is your closing statement for Game of the Year? What? what? <laughs> even, yo, even Aki said. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Knowing that Blade's enchanted, what is your closing statement what you, for? What you talking about? <laughs> see, like episode one forty-seven. <laughs> Look at his ham. Oh uh, man, dog. he he been wanting attention. I want a dog again, man. I want the dog again. That's my but, buddy. Uh, by the way, by the way. Uh, but shout out to everybody for uh for listening to another episode. Uh, I just want to, even though my wife's probably not going to listen to this, but I just want to uh, shout her out. We Aww. recently celebrated our four year wedding anniversary. We've been together for seven years. You know, trying to even though well, she's not she's not black, but we gonna she's gonna be honorary black. But we you know I'm trying to be a good example of some of some black love. And uh, you know, we love a that. man and a woman. A man and a woman standing. She together. black because so your kids is black. It is what it is. Pretty it much, is yeah. What it yeah, is. pretty much. Uh, but I love her, so shout out to her. Hey, hey, y'all, oh. y'all, y'all see that shit? Y'all better stop mm-hmm. listening to these goddamn these, alpha male these podcasts. podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> y'all cool better be, find some action people. It's cool to be in love, nigga. Grow up. Uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, man. I don't. I don't yeah, know if anybody's still watching it. I don't know if anybody's still watching that. Be, I don't know why. So I don't listen to people actually. Be aware there. of people's mm-hmm. nature, but yeah. also don't be afraid to be in love. Don't grow up being an old ass nigga and shit, being lonely and shit. That shit. Remember that up. Twitter space where someone tried to tell Khalif about relationships and he'd been married for, for ten years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I'm, I'm like, you ain't even know, bro. Like, <laughs> Khalif was married for over almost decade. <laughs> like, get the fuck off Twitter. Get in the real insane, world. Insane, bro. Insane. Listen to people that actually been married, please. <laughs> uh, since you believe the blades enchanted, uh, Ethos, what's your closing statement for Game of Thrones? What does that episode? mean? That's my final. What does that mean? <laughs> Explain that to us. I don't know. I can't even tell you what the story. I told you that's one of my most disappointing games of the year. I just remember hearing that shit. I was like, "What the fuck is she talking about?" There's a blade. Somebody swung it, and she said, "That blade's enchanted." Oh, okay. Um. Yeah. That's it. I. That's <laughs> what I wanted to know. Thanks everybody for watching. Um. Mm. Yeah, I'm out. All right. Well, my closing statement for GI episode 147. Two things. Uh, season two trailer for Invincible just dropped. Go check that out goat show the animation looks better and then also if you need a good show to watch check out gen v on amazon prime it's a spinoff show of the boys that shit is fire it's like um my hero academia meets like euphoria uh and like <laughs> it's a lot of drugs and like fuck shit bro euphoria but, baby yeah <laughs> oh, man. that shit no it's fire i'm hooked on it go get on season three now uh-huh man. nope I'm I'm loving it. And, it and it ties into the to the boys too so it, it's yeah. it's a nice little conspiracy show but yeah, yeah watch the first episode it was yeah. it was really good yeah Sweet. i'm watching ozarks right now that's pretty good too so yeah well, i'm gonna catch up man yeah i'm catching up on season two right now. did y'all watch Enjoy ahsoka yes no I i've been it. spoiled though I've did you like it jay everything i did i did i thoroughly another good show it. another good show i thoroughly enjoyed it that's peak star wars right there um R.I.P. to Ray Stevenson, too. That's the dude who played uh, Balin Skull. I don't know if you know, he passed away. Uh, yeah, I, I did not know. Yeah, I was That's like, the old white, oh, the white hair dude? Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the rogue yeah, Jedi yeah. in the show. I'm like, I, I think they did put that at the end of the, of the yeah, episode. Yeah, that was him. Believe, yeah. It's going to be interesting um, to see what they do with the show. Uh, but yeah, I appreciate everybody coming through. This has been Game and Illuminati episode 147. If you're new here, make sure to hit the sub button on YouTube. Also hit the like button. If you made it this far into the show, um hashtag feds did the sweep on the video in the comments uh let's let's get that going hashtag no, just a hashtag fed sweep <laughs> yeah, yeah hashtag fed sweep <laughs> put that in the comments if you made it this far into the show as far as our audio listeners we appreciate you make sure to rate the show five stars that helps the show grow follow us on social media at gi updates and we'll see you on the next episode of the game and illuminati podcast peace will spider-man Fulfill you. all your fantasies. <laughs> <laughs> I, hope I, so. hope so. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so.